Get ready to match the stars. Michael Landon. Vicki Lawrence. Jack Klugman. Joanne Flug. Richard Tawson. Anita Gillette says we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 73. And here's the host of Match Game 73, Gene Rayburn. bunch of coconuts and I thank you for being here. Listen, what Jack. What is that border lay got over there? Uh, this, what is that lace? That's real stats, not lace. It's just a little fancy stitching because it's a fancy show. Uh -huh. Now you've been putting Brett down on some of your previous answers here and why do you, she's a lovely lady. Why do you do that? She's a lovely, how well do you know her? I have lived with her for 20 years. I put her down, I, she's a lovely lady. She's she a understands. lovely lady. We have to pay the rent, so I put her down. For oh, her. I see, <laughs> that's all an act. All right, here we go. Everybody ready out there? Ready. Okay, I welcome you to Match Game 73, and now the first thing we ought to do is say hello to our two contestants. Hello there. How are you, Stanley? I'm Terry, nice to have you with us again. Now, uh, Stanley here is our current champion. She's won $1,050, and she's doing very well. And her challenger, Kay Pinkston. When time was up yesterday, the score was four to three, and uh, we had completed the first round, and uh, that's where we're gonna pick up in a moment or so, and we're gonna do that right after this. Match game 73, we are ready to proceed, ladies, with the second and final round in this game, and here we go. Now, the score is four to three, and Kay, remember, you must match one celebrity to stay in the game, and you make the selection as the challenger. May I have A? You may have A. Now, in the previous round, Kay, you matched Mike, Jack, and Richard, and now with this, you'll be trying to match uh, Vicki, Joanne, and Anita. Ready? Here we go. Mary always made blank in the morning. <laughs> Mary always made blank in the morning. All right. For some reason that tickles Mike. I don't know why, but there he is. Everybody ready over there? So Kay, we'll call for your response to this. Mary always made... Eggs. Eggs in the morning is her answer. All right. Now remember, you must match one celebrity to stay in the running, and let's see what happens here now. We'll begin with you, uh, Vicky. May we see your response? Michael's being no good up here. Yeah, he is no good. <laughs> well, I don't eat breakfast, so I put coffee. Coffee. All right. There's no match there. Let's see what Joanne has. We're looking for egg. I was thinking Mrs. Olson's tip, and I put coffee too. Oh, coffee. Oh, all right. We're down to Anita, and you must match Anita to well, get a tie here. It's always coffee. For me too. Oh, coffee! So our winner is Stanley. Yeah. Hill. Well, we're sorry to say goodbye to this lovely lady, Kay Pinkston. We thank you for being with us. We've got a gift backstage, and thank you for playing Match Game 73. Kay Pinkston. Now, Stanley, uh, you've been through this a number of times before, but I'm going to say it again just in case you've forgotten. You won $100, and now the right to try for our super match here in which you can win over $5,000. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. We polled a previous studio audience for their best response to this. Watch your blank. Watch your blank. Now, the most frequent response given to that audience is worth $500 if you can match it. The second most common answer, $250, and the third, $100. Now, whatever you win here is yours to keep, but more important than that, you get the opportunity to go on and try for 10 times your winnings, okay? Which means if you match the $500 response, you'll have a shot at $5,000. All right, you know that. Now, the panelists are gonna help you. You'll choose three celebrities, one at a time, get their suggested responses, and then select one. All right, now, who do you wanna start with? Mike. Mike Landon, how do you do this? Watch your step. Watch your step is what he says. Okay. Another celebrity, Stanley? Uh, 
Um, Anita. Anita? Watch your weight. Watch your weight. Okay, no significance to that. I'll try. All right. And your third one? Joanne. Oh, no. Joanne. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. Watch your... He said step. We've got step and we've got weight. Watch your... You wouldn't watch your tongue. Watch your wallet. Watch your wallet. That's the only thing I can come <laughs> okay. up with. All right. You tell where she's been eating lately. That's right. So we've got watch your step, watch your weight, and watch your wallet. Those are the panel suggestions. Now you pick one of those or discard them all and give us one of your own. But right now we want one response. Step. Watch your step. That's the one that Mike gave you. All right. Here we go. Let's find out how the audience responded. We're looking for watch your step. May we see the $100 response? Watch your language. That isn't bad there. Okay, it's not there. We're looking for watch your step. May we see the $250 response? Watch your weight. Oh, Anita gave you that one. Uh-oh, here's your third and last chance, Stanley. We're looking for watch your step. May we see the $500 response? Watch your step. You've got the $500, and now you go for $5,000. Mike Landon there gave you a watch your step. All right. Now, to collect the $5,000, you must match one of our celebrities and match that star head to head. Pick a celebrity right now. I'll go with Mike. Mike Landon. <laughs> All right. Mike will get ready. I'll get your question. <clears throat> and here it is. Now, listen carefully, Mike. You face me, all right? Blank Derby. Blank Derby. All right, Mike has finished reading his answer now, and now we'll have to call for your response, uh, Stanley. Blank Derby. Kentucky. Kentucky Derby is what she says. Mike Landon for $5,000. Let's see your answer. Well, my wife's from Louisville, so it's got to be Kentucky. Kentucky There's a lady down in the first row here, bouncing up and down and really happy, and she's a friend of yours, right? Well, we're all very happy for you, Stanley. You won $5,000 a moment ago. You now have a total of $6,650, and you're not through yet. You can take on a new challenger, and she's going to do that right after this. We've just had a big winner here on Match Game 73. Uh, I just asked Stanley what she's going to do with her winnings, and she says, I really never expected to win. I haven't thought about it. And she said, I can't. Uh, take a deep breath. <laughs> she said she can't get her breath. It really is an exciting moment for her. Now, let's say hello to our new player, Phil Gilman. Tell us a little about yourself, please. All right, I'm a mommy of a boy that'll be seven next month, and a girl will be five, uh, six next month, and a wife, and I tutor reading in an elementary school. Right, well, Stanley here has an unusual first name because she was named after a motion picture that Betty Davis starred in and played a part named Stanley. Your name is a little unusual, F-I-L. You want right. to say th something about that? Well, my first boyfriend nicknamed me that because he couldn't pronounce my real name, which is Felicit. Which is what? Felicit. Felicit. Right. Anything you say, dear. <laughs> now, here we go. I'll just review the rules briefly for you, Felicit. Both of you are going to try to match our six celebrities in answering questions. You're going to get two chances. At the end of the second round, whoever has matched the most celebrities wins, gets $100, and has the right to go to our super match where you can win over $5,000. Phil, the challenger makes the selection, so we'll go ahead and do that right now, if you please. All right. B. B is what she says. All right, everybody plays, so if you're all set, we'll do this. John came back from Las Vegas, a blanker man. John came back from Las Vegas, a blanker man. So, 
he thinks about that. <clears throat> All set up there? Okay, here we go. Now we'll call for Phil's response. John came back from Las Vegas. A uh, broker man. A broker man. Will these have to be exact matches there, Your Honor? Broker man? Well, we'll find out what happens as we go along here. Mike Landon will call on you. Well, he probably was a broker man, but that also made him a wiser man. A wiser man? All right, now let's call on Vicki Lawrence. We're looking for a broker man. I tried to think positive, so I put wealthier. Wealthier man. <laughs> All right, Jack Klugman, who has never been to Las Vegas. Yeah, maybe John came home a broker man, but Jack came home a poorer man. A poorer man. That is a match, okay? They don't have to be the exact words. Same idea in this case, uh, Joanne. All the tales I hear about Vegas, I would say. Um, a poor man. A poor man. So there's another match for you. And Richard... Yeah, you don't have to uh, be a poor man. The one way to beat the tables at Vegas is when you get off the plane, you walk straight into the propeller. And I said, poor man. Well, another match for you. Phil's very happy about that. And uh, Nita Gillette. Well, I I've never come back any other way but poor. Poor. <laughs> We picked up four there, and now let's see how the champ does. Ready, champ? All right, here we go. Everyone plays. Morris said to Evelyn... <laughs> what? What was that? <laughs> oh, that was Morris. Fire John and Mary. No, John and Mary, John, a short hiatus. Morris said to Evelyn, <laughs> why do you spend so much time in the blank? <laughs> Watch it, sir. Morris said to Evelyn, why do you spend so much time in the blank? Okay, Joanne is now ready, so Stanley will call for your answer. The bed. I beg your pardon? <laughs> <laughs> uh, B-E-D. Oh, B-E-D, that's what I thought she said. The bed is what she said. Why do you spend so much time in the... All right, Mike, it's your turn now. I don't think he would... Complain about that. I said the bathroom. In the bathroom. Yeah, that's his answer. No match there. Vicki, what do you say? We're looking for the bed. I was told no four-letter words to be a cute, good little girl, but I had to put John. In the bed. Okay. <laughs> All right. You're a cute, good little girl in my book any day. Jack, what do you say? Well, then Evelyn saw that the box of prunes was gone, and she said, bathroom, bathroom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Joanne Flug, we're looking for a bed. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Very well, but have her back by Thursday. <laughs> My syntax is all mixed up here. Joanne, we're looking for the answer. Bed, would you show us your card, please? I thought he might be like my husband. He's always working on his Porsche. So I put the garage. In the garage. <laughs> Morris and Evelyn. Okay. Richard, what do you say? Well, you know John and Mary. John was married to Evelyn once. <laughs> oh, really? That was his other wife. And so I put John's other wife, other John. Uh, <laughs> Just a little humor. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Anita, we're looking for bed. Well. I'm afraid that I don't spend as much time in the bed as I should, but I do spend a lot of time in the bathroom. Well, I'm sorry for your problem there, but no. uh... I meant I don't sleep a lot. So, oh, I see. Oh, all right. Stanley, you didn't do too well with that one. At the end of round one, Phil is ahead four to nothing, and now we'll go to round two. We'll go to round two. <laughs> Here we go to round two, folks. See how nice everything is... Uh... Challenger, would you make a selection, please? I'm going to try A this time. A is what she's going to try this time. Now, since you matched four people in the first round, Jack, Joanne, Richard, and Anita, you'll just be matching, or trying to match, Mike and Vicky. Here we go. These must be exact matches, except for plurals. John ate like a blank. John ate like a blank. Did you hear that? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> all right, they are all ready, Phil. May we have your response? Lots of food. I beg your pardon? Lo John ate like... Did you hear oh, me? Oh, I thought you said... No. Ate blank of no. blank. John ate like a blank. Like a pig. 
<laughs> you don't have to get hostile about it. That <laughs> That's your answer. John ate like a pig. May we see your answer, please? Sir? I'm afraid you're talking about Big John. I'm talking about Little John who eats like a bird. Oh, yes. <laughs> Very small yeah. appetite. Yes. All right. No match there. Vicky. Well, John. I don't mean to be so hostile about it, but yeah, I agree. Pig is a match. Very good, <laughs> Phil. So you pick up one more score there. You now have five. And let's complete the round here with Stanley. Now, you must match five celebrities to stay in the game. Six, however, could win it for you. Here we go, and everyone will participate since she mats no one in the first round. Mary said to John, you need to have your blank examined. Mary said to John, you need to have your blank examined. Everybody's ready. So, Stanley, we'll get your answer right now. Head. Head is what she says. And now you need five celebrity matches here to stay in the game. And let's begin with Mike Lennon. You need to have your... Your little old head. Head examined. You've got one, Stanley. You need four more to stay in the game. Ficky. Head. All right, you've got two heads there. You and... need a box of prunes, you'll have your head examined. Okay. <laughs> Three. You need two more to stay in the running. Let's see if you get it. Joanne? Well, let's see. I said head. Head. There it is. All right. You need one more to stay in the game, Stanley. Richard? Stanley, I know you'll think that I'm just doing this to be cruel, but head. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the score is tied. One more, and you win the game. Anita Gillette? Well, I don't know what else you can have examined on the air except your head. So <laughs> Well, we're sorry to say goodbye to you. You're a very charming lady. We do have a gift for you backstage, together with our thanks for playing Match Game 73. There's a gift. I don't, I don't know how much more exciting this is going to get for you, but uh, remember, for winning the game, we're going to deposit the $100 in your account, give you a chance at our Super Match, which can pay over $5,000 here. And all that's going to happen right after this happens. Stanley Viltzer and I are getting to be old friends. She's up to $6,750. She's stood in this place how many times, Stanley? I don't know. <laughs> she doesn't know how many games she's won. She's won about four or five games. She's doing very well. You all ready for the super match? Yes, I'm ready. All right, here it is. Shall we have a go at it? Okay, we asked a previous studio audience for their best response to this. Blank belly. Blank belly. Now, you remember the top response pays $500, the second $250, and the third $100. Whatever you win here will be yours, but more important, you'll have the opportunity then to go on for 10 times those winnings and a chance at $5,000. All right, now select three celebrities and get their best response. Number one? Joanne. The only Joanne. thing I can think of is Jelly Belly. Jelly Belly? <laughs> Isn't what made really? you think of that? Uh, never mind. Okay, <laughs> Jelly Belly is her answer. Now with the celebrity. Mike. What do you uh, say, Mike? I would say Yellow Belly. Yellow Belly mm -hmm. is what he says. All right, one more. Jack. Jack Klugman, how do you respond to this? Blank. Fat belly. <laughs> oh, I mean, no, I didn't mean it personally, sir. Oh, nothing personal. We're talking about losing weight before. No, oh, fat belly. Yes. Okay, I'll just suck it in and do the rest of the show like this. So we've got uh, jelly belly, yellow belly, and fat belly. This is disgusting. <laughs> All right, now, Stanley, you may take one of those or give us one of your own, if you please, but now we must call for one answer. Yellow. 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 You've decided to go with one of the celebrities' responses. Yellow belly, the one that Mike Landon gave you. All right, now let's find out how that audience responded. We're looking for yellow belly. May we see the $100 response? Pot belly. Oh, that's a good one. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Well, I couldn't give it to you anyway. We're looking for yellow belly. May we see the $250 response? Beer belly. Well, I had the same idea that Jack had in mind, but not it exactly. We're still looking for yellow belly. 
Here's your third and last chance. May we see the $500 response? Oh, Jelly Belly, who gave you that? Was that yours? Yeah. Oh, well, it really is amazing. Yeah, That's really, really. very good, Joanne. Really? Stanley, I'm sorry you didn't match any of your celebrities. You still have the money you won for the game and the right to take on a new contender. Just to recap, your total amount is $6,750. Stand by, we'll be back right after this. Time is up for today, so that ends today's session of Match Game 73. Our current champion, Stanley Viltz, who's won $6,750, will be back tomorrow to take on a new contender. So we'll look forward to seeing her, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time, too. You were just dandy, all of you, and I thank you very much. Award-winning, you're a modest guy, that award-winning Jack no, Clubman. No, no, I'm not. I got it here. Oh, well, you have. <laughs> <laughs> Who stole it? See you all next time. Until tomorrow, Gene Rayburn saying so long for Match Game 73. Today's Constellation Prizes are the Weekender by American Tourister, designed to go everywhere by land, sea, or air. Fiberglass reinforced construction, strong, lightweight luggage by American Tourister. And delicious fill and eat ready crust. Your dessert will seem like it came from the pastry chef. Ready crust, a special treat. <laughs> This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 73, a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. Stay tuned for Secret Storm next over most of these stations. Match Game 74, production number 0245, take one. Get ready to match the stars. Charles Nelson Riley, Brett Summers, John Adams, Elaine Jordan, Richard Dawson, and Mitzi McCall as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 74. And now, here's the host of Match Game 74, Gene It's the best I can do on this 4th of July. It's the closest thing I could get for it to a sparkler. Uh, you came on with a bang. My oh. fingers are burning. <laughs> bang. May not have occurred to you, but in England, this is a day of mourning. Oh. <laughs> All right, here comes a rocket right at you. Just a second. <laughs> well, my tea's nearly ready. <laughs> How's everybody up here? We're, We're terrific. How are you feeling, Charles? Much better today, thank Good. you. Good. And no, you, my dear? Yeah. <laughs> How are you? If he doesn't feel well, why doesn't he go to a hospital and stop spreading his... You because maybe the nurse would look like you. <laughs> And you shall find. He's a carrier. He is. There's going to be panic in the streets. Shall we? Uh, would you join me in a little applause for our two players here, Sandy Corey and Kendra Plummer? Hello, ladies. Ready? Okay. I tell you what we're going to do. Uh, Sandra's our current champ. She's won three thousand dollars even, and that's pretty good. And she's being challenged by Kendra, who's had her first round question scored two matches. Your first round question will be coming up in a moment or so. But first, friends, as they say in television, this message. Uh, all right, I'll push this button and reveal this first round question, which we have for Sandy. Ready, Sandy? I'm ready. All right, listen carefully to this. Everybody plays. Next week. The Frankenstein monster will be on match game 74. He's replacing blank. <laughs> My lips are sealed. <laughs> Next week, the Frankenstein monster will be on match game 74. He's replacing blank. Stop. I won't look. 
I won't look at all. It'll be a total surprise to me. <coughs> Don, are you ready? Oh. The what? Are you ready, Don? Uh, the Frankenstein monster oh, yeah. who needs replacing. Oh, I can't blank. do it. It's mean. <laughs> well, it's only a game. <laughs> no, all right. Say that. I can't. Wait, I gotta. That's the third time you've changed your mind. You should change it to refrigerator. Refrigerator. R E. No. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, back to back to this one. All right. She's finished. And now we need a response from you, Sandy. Next week, the Frankenstein monster will be on Match Game 74. He's replacing Don. Oh. <laughs> I won for you. <laughs> All right, she says done. Is there any special reason why you well, chose done? It couldn't be one of the regulars. I didn't feel like it, you know, could be one of the regulars. Yeah. And um, so you chose done. I felt like Don was the yeah. best. She chose choice. you, Don. It was really a gesture of love and affection. Because she knows we're running away together. <laughs> what do you say, Charles Nelson Wright? I chose Wright? the Betsy Ross of the panel, <laughs> lovely Brett. Yes. <laughs> Now, Brett uh, was chosen by Charles, That's and Brett joke. chooses... Well, the only person that it would be at all possible to choose. Dickie Dawson. Dickie <laughs> Dawson. <laughs> all right. Uh, Don, what do you say? Where is that Sandy? <laughs> 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 no, I said Charlie, but I didn't say Charlie who. I didn't say Charlie who. Okay. So, we don't have a match for Sandy yet. She chose John. What do you say? I'm, my nickname's Charlie. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so you said me? No, it no. isn't. Uh, you're not going to like this because I said you. <laughs> oh, oh, no, I've got two. <laughs> all I did was pull a string. That's, That's all. That's all you have to do. All right, while you're putting it all together, we'll call on Richard. Wardrobe! Wardrobe! I can't do it. Go to my dress. Well, nobody is. Just stand there. No, no, no. I'll do it. 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 I untied it. I'll tie it. You give us your answer while I'm well, putting it together. <laughs> Say, tell me where it's tight. Is, is that tight enough? Yes, that's I've never done this before. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, Richard. May I just say, mm -hmm. you made an old man very happy. <laughs> All right. I Next said, week, the Frankenstein monster will be on Match Game 74. He's replacing... Who else? Brad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Her answer is Don. Mitzi, what is your answer? Well, darling, I wish you wouldn't spread those germs around, but I said, my friend. Let <laughs> <laughs> oh, me imitate you. Imitation of breath, <laughs> <I'm laughs> Mitzi. Okay. Well, two to nothing at the end of round one, and we have round two to go through, but first we've got to go through this message for you. Okay. Round one is over. Here comes round two. Here Kendra, come. would you make a selection? B again, please. B was good to her last time. She matched Richard and Brett. The others uh, will participate. Those two will not. Here's a TV guide listing for you. Oh. A Wednesday night, CBS. What else? What? Cannon. Uh-huh. Cannon blanks a runaway elephant. <laughs> that I wish I would play. Wednesday night, CBS, Cannon. <coughs> Cannon blanks a runaway elephant. <laughs> All right, Charles is ready. Next time I try and help you. You're in this too. <laughs> yeah. No, no, your name is John. My name is Jack. <laughs> oh, he's a smart little devil. Yes, he is. slow. But he's smart. <laughs> I said the others will not participate. Well, no, I said, well, then, I said the others will participate. Oh, see how I can be wrong be sometimes? Yep. Oh, he's not only really crazy, crazy right? he's deaf. Yes. Now, Kendra, a TV guide listing for you. Wednesday night, CBS, Canon. Canon blanks a runaway elephant. Catches. Canon catches a runaway elephant. Some logic to that? Charles? Well, for the lack of audience support, <laughs> and for the complete latka that that answer gave, I will give the kid a break and say, catch it. 
answer. You thought it was a rotten answer, right, audience? Yeah. And you were wrong. <laughs> what do you say, Don? Uh, I think this is in the same category. Traps. Traps and catches. Yeah. There it is, another man. Well, she's doing pretty well with that and didn't have much confidence in it. And let's get to Elaine Joyce. You notice how smoothly the game goes when Brett doesn't write? <laughs> <laughs> Watch really... that. I'll That's have to show the people me. your roots. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this poor runaway elephant, Cannon, you know, he's a big guy and right, and so this was kind of familiar to him, so he adopted. He adopted the elephant. The elephant. He loved that elephant. Yeah. Smooth but boring. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. You say, well, I think Cannon's a little kinky, and I say he marries a runaway elephant. Oh, I think that's he nice. married a runaway elephant, oh, eh? Yeah. Oh, he Gave packed him a his home. trunk before he did. And yeah. lived happily ever after. Okay, moving All right, right on. All right, so it's four to nothing, Sandy. You've got to score four to stay in the game. Five will win another game for you, however. Now, everybody plays. Oh, hey, we've got something special for you. I hope so, This Gene. is the match game hangover cure. <laughs> ah. Now, here's what you do. You take a large bowl and you mix in the following. <laughs> one cup vinegar, one cup booze. Uh. One raw egg, Ugh. one cup booze. <laughs> one cup mouthwash and one cup booze. Ugh. Drink it right down and in 60 seconds you'll be blank. <laughs> You got any idea, Sandy? No. <laughs> Would you like to read it while I'm uh, talking? No, the to drinker you finished here? first. What's that? Finished first. The drinker first. finished first. All right. You just don't ask the right questions. <laughs> <laughs> you know about hangovers, do you? I've had some of the best hangovers in the business. <laughs> you thinking about it, Charles? Okay. John's ready. Charles is finished. Elaine's ready. Now, have you thought about it? Yes. Uh, one cup of mouthwash, one Wait. cup of booze, drink it right down, and in 60 seconds you'll be... Smashed. Smashed. Well, that's all you could be. <laughs> that's all you could be. Well, she studied it very well. You'll be mad. Smashed. Smashed. I mean, you drink one cup of vinegar, one cup of booze, one raw egg, one cup of booze, one cup of mouthwash, one cup of booze. Uh, you gotta be smashed. Charles, it's cold. <laughs> Charles? Then you'll be staying home next week? <laughs> <laughs> you be dead. That's a little more than smashed, isn't it? What did you say, Jim? Dead. Brett? Good heavens, that's what I said. Dead. All right. Got to match everybody else to stay in the game. Let's see if it happens. Don? Is this the same as smashed? Expired. No, that's the same as dead. So, Kendra Plummer is the winner. Congratulations. That's it. Yeah, Carol. Congratulations to you. Stand by for a moment, Kendra. Sandy, uh, you'll be leaving us now, and uh, but not empty-handed. You've got an even three thousand dollars. We congratulate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye. There she goes with her money. She did very well, Kendra. She had uh, three thousand dollars to her credit, and she uh, did very well. Now, Kendra, you face me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're going to talk about this big money super match over here. <laughs> Are you all right? No. But no. Go, but just go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll go ahead. <laughs> so we, we had this whole studio audience one day, and we got their best response to this. <laughs> right? <laughs> Maniac. Oh. Now, the answer they gave most of it is worth $500 if you match it. Then if you match the next one, it's $250. In the third, $100. Which celebrities would you like to get a little help from? Oh, Brett, because they were picking on her so much earlier. You wonderful right. person. Yeah, I'm tor torn between. Well, there's there are two terrific. Well, maybe I'll go for give ego. us one. Oh, I wish I could give you two. Okay, I'm going to go for egomaniac. Egomaniac is her response. And Dickie. <laughs> something well, I hope I like to that. be. Uh, something I hope to be when I grow up. A sex maniac. Okay. One more. Don? Nympho. <laughs> Something you hope to be when you grow up? <laughs> if I can get a sale out, I'll meet when I grow up. <laughs> so, you have three interesting <laughs> answers. Sex maniac, nymphomaniac, and egomaniac. 
What's that? I said they're all about the same, aren't they? Really? I <laughs> 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 hope not. Bad. Yeah. All right. Now you may choose one of those or get one. Deal. Don't keep running away from me. We got to stay in one spot so you can get nice, pretty pictures of your face here. You want to choose one of those or give us one of your own? Uh, I'll take six. Okay. <laughs> Just to say. <laughs> should have taken That's info. one sex to go. <laughs> Hold the mayo. <laughs> All right. Uh, how can I put this? Uh, we're looking for sex. May I see the one hundred dollar response? Klepto. Klepto. You can see how that audience yes. was working there. That really was. All right. Popular. The answer we want is sex maniac, and we're <laughs> we're looking now. May we see the two hundred and fifty dollar thing there? Raving oh. maniac. Wow. Wow. Funny. Have faith, though. Have faith. <laughs> sex will out, baby. You think so? You think it's up there, there audience? You, you think sex there maniac is under there? Aren't you going to be surprised? May we see the five hundred dollar response? Yeah. Yeah. So, the sex won you $500. Huh? Oh. And that means you got to play for 10 times that amount now or $5,000. But remember, you have to match one celebrity head to head. Has to be an exact match. Which one will it be? Oh, I have to go with Mr. Dawson again. <laughs> Mr. Dawson. And it's worth okay. every penny. Right. <laughs> okay. You face me, if you would, please, Kendra. And here is the $5,000 question Blank treat. T R E A T. Blank treat. His pen ran out of juice there, and he changed pens. Did you notice how smoothly he did that? As well, he was thank writing. you. Okay, he's finished. Now, Kendra, what answer do you think of to match Richard Dawson? Blank treat. Well, it's the wrong time of year, but trick or treat. Trick or treat? <laughs> That happens in November. The audience seems to like it. We'll find out right now whether you win the money or not. Richard, for $5,000, may we see your response? Well, what happens when you go out and you, buy, you don't have enough money to buy the girl a meal? What do they call that? <laughs> Dutch well, treat. In England, we call that trick or treat. <laughs> the runway here <laughs> and see who takes it off next here so don't go too far away a little message for you we're ready to start a brand new game to do that we're very pleased to present a new player let's welcome jack holder hello jack hello there how are you Lovely. good you know kendra how do you feel kendra Oh, fantastic. Okay. <laughs> now, Jack, would you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. I'm a welding foreman. I'm from Long Beach. I'm You're a what foreman? Welding foreman. A welding foreman. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm from Long Beach. I'm here with my lovely wife, Judy. I have a three-year-old son, Brian, and I have another one on the way. Oh. <laughs> he doesn't look it, does he? <laughs> <laughs> you hardly show it all, Jack. <laughs> Good luck to you here. Shall we begin? Bing. Push the button, reveal two questions, ask the challenger to make a selection. A. A is what he wants. New game, folks. You ready? Yeah. We certainly are. Are you ready, Mitzi? Oh, I'm ready any time. All right, here we go. <laughs> the psychiatrist said to Bernie, How come every single inkblot I show you reminds you of blank? <laughs> the psychiatrist said to Bernie, How come every single inkblot I show you reminds you of blank? I had to... Why did I the best. get that? 
co coffee during the commercial. Don't, you shouldn't eat on the camera. I keep I'm telling like, him. Like, There's a chance it might glue her mouth shut. Let her eat. Would you I'm going to get it. Would you write I'm going to get you in the parking lot. I, I <laughs> never stand up again. <laughs> I well, if I could understand the bloody question, I'd the be The psychiatrist thrilled. said to Bernie, how come every single ink blot I show you reminds you of... Oh, okay. See how easy it is when you put your mind to it, Brett. <laughs> okay, Jack Holder. How come every single ink blot I show you reminds you of... Sex? Every time that word is mentioned, that audience they applauds like crazy. Up. They really come to life when you say that word, Charles. Well, they're going to be dead now, but I said your wife, which is on the road to the correct answer. Yeah, but not quite. <laughs> Brett? Well, from that old standby maniac, sex. There it is. The Yayers are at it again, Don. What was the question? <laughs> How come every single ink blot I show you reminds you of... A leaky fountain pen. <laughs> Don't even want to see it. Is I that what it really says? It really says a leaky, leaky fountain pen. A leaky pen. fountain pen. That's what it remind me of. I think we should administer the Rorschach test to Don immediately. And Between a sailor and a leaky fountain pen, I think you're right. <laughs> what do you say? I, uh, I'm like the rest. I, when they're going to light up like crazy. Sex. Sex is the word. Okay. I'll Richard, bet he said that. I'll bet anything he said it. Because it's written on your forehead. <laughs> Why don't we tell our wives we're in Tijuana? <laughs> no one to be any of the wives. Oh. <laughs> so I wrote sex. See? All right. Sex is the answer that uh, Jack is looking for, Mitzi. What do you say? I was in the war and I have shrapnel. <laughs> I want sympathy. <laughs> I put me. I'm sorry. See, he went, How me. come every single ink blot I show you reminds you of me? The psychiatrist is speaking. Don't you get it? Very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. <laughs> you want to take my top off? No, 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 no. <laughs> You're going to join Don in the padded room a little bit later. Okay. And it's three to nothing at this moment in the middle of round one, and we've got to stop here and do a little business with you, and this is it. <laughs> I did. All right. Listen, we've got to stop right here, I'm sorry to say. Uh, three to nothing, <laughs> middle of round one. Your first round question will come up next time. And we'll look forward to seeing you. And look forward to seeing all of you again. You were just terrific. Oh, thank you. <laughs> terrific. And my ink plot reminds me of you. Oh, <laughs> I thank you for that, Mitzi. Okay. And thank you for being with us. And we'll have you back again sometime. Thank you. And you too, sir. You were all grand. I'm not a now, sir, I'm a man. Next time we get together, we're going to have this group of dingalings for your enjoyment. Maury Amsterdam, <laughs> Brett Summers, George Kirby, Joanne Flood, Richard Dawson, and Betty White. Team Rayburn for Match Game 74. Join us next time. Goodbye. This is Johnny Olsen speaking for Match Game 74. A Mark Goodson, Bill Trotman production. Stay tuned for Tattletales next over most of the CBS stations. Get ready to match the stars. Bill Daly, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Ethel Merman, Richard Dawson, and Fanny Fly, as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 75. And now here's the star of Match Game 75, Gene Rivers. Okay, we are ready. Listen, I forgot to say the last time we were together that he's with Bob What's-His-Name show. He's uh, one of the stars of the uh, Bob Newhart show there. Very oh, wonderful. Yeah. This, uh, Can I applaud myself for Bill, that? Bill, uh, What's-His-Name. Yeah. Sure. <laughs>
You know, you're really marvelous in that show. Thank you. Everybody in that show is good. Uh, you got specials you for children that are marvelous called Bill Bailey's Hocus Pocus Show, and they're a delight. Thank you. Right. Yes, thank you. Now, you three dollars, please. This, uh, I've never seen those. Where do they play in syndication? Yeah, they're in syndication. They're yeah. in about 150 Tijuana. markets. Tijuana. Oh, I see, yeah. <laughs> All right. Guadalajara. <laughs> Guadalajara. <laughs> they're in the <laughs> same markets. Yeah. The masquerade they're right, party or something. Right after the religious sign offs. They come yes, about 1.15 in the morning. It's kind of hard to get them. All right, if you're ready, we'll have a go at it. And let's say hello to these two charming ladies here, Sonny Hodges and Maggie Moore. Hello, ladies. How are you? Fine. Sonny is our current champ, as you know. She won $6,300. Have you spent that in your head yet? Mm, no. No? You have any idea? I mean, here's $6,300. What are you going to do with it? Uh, I'm going to see my sister. Go visit my sister. Where does she live? In Japan. Oh, well. <laughs> Here's seven thousand dollars. <laughs> Maggie Moore has had her first round question. Uh, I beg your pardon. I say funny. She doesn't look Japanese. No, she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Maggie Moore has had her first round question and matched three of our celebrities, which is kind of unusual for a first rounder. Usually, you know, they're a little tougher than that. You did very well, and your question is going to come along in a minute or so. But right now, we're going to pass along this message of interest to you. So I ask you to pay, please. Uh, here we go. Now, Sonny, this is all yours. Listen carefully. Everybody plays. Harvey's psychiatrist wow. charges him double because Harvey has two blanks. <laughs> Harvey's psychiatrist charges him double because Harvey has two blanks. Just let me, just let me check. After earlier answers, just let me check here. Do I get something for doing it? For getting Brett. that in ahead of everybody? No, I'm just It's trying. my show, Brett. Oh, if anybody's going to check him, it's going to be me. Oh, oh okay, honey. Anything right. you say. <laughs> See you in Encino. All right. That doesn't change a thing. Here we go, Sonny Hodges. Harvey's psychiatrist charges him double because Harvey has two blanks. I hope he's assigned these twins. I said bodies. Has two bodies. Bodies. Well, oh, she said, I hope he's a Siamese, a Siamese twin. He has two bodies. They're turning on her right away. I'm, That's right. I'm afraid of my answer. Yes. What, do you, what do you say? They beat you up after the show if you're wrong. But I, don't know. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, I think we're really kind of together on that because uh, this got to be, I said heads, two heads. Two heads? Siamese twin. Does that mean we're together? No. No. Yeah, a Siamese uh, a twin uh, has, you know, one head and two bodies or various parts. What do you say there? Didn't Bill give a terrific answer? Yeah, very good Thank answer. You, boy. That's, that's a marvelous that's, answer. That's Thank really you. A thing. No match, marvelous but a marvelous answer. answer. I said head. Say, yeah. <laughs> See, Sonny, psychiatrist deals with head problems, emotional problems, huh. which are in your head mostly. What do you say, Charles? I said two personality. Two personalities. All right. <laughs> Harvey's psychiatrist charges him double because Harvey has two heads, according to Sonny. Well, I didn't, I didn't think about two bodies, but I did say two heads. You got a lot of heads here, but no bodies, Sonny. What do you say, Rich? I was going to say tails, but I said head. <laughs> head. All right. <laughs> Miss Weirdo of 1975. Oh, no. This she's is Jackie Cassie. Sure. I'm on that. display in a toy store later. <laughs> <laughs> Now, here's what I have to say. Uh, not having experience with psychiatrics, but my friend Brett, oh, oops, uh, <laughs> that many people go because they're two-faced. I said they're two-faced. Two faces. Didn't match either, did it? I, I, no, I, I must say that uh, really is very attractive. If you don't have color television, why well, you don't? You may not be aware of the fact that it looks like uh, a bed quilt. And it's, no, tell him what he said. said what, who well, that's that? his, uh, I didn't say that. No, no, but someone said, that's someone very said. funny to her. I just took you off my bed this morning. <laughs> it, it, it really does look like a quilted bedspread. Looks like a quilted bedspread, but it's very pretty. It is a quilted bedspread. Oh, it is. All right. Now we've got a round two, Maggie Moore. A, please. A it is. You matched three celebrities last time. Matched Ethel, Richard, and... And Chuck. Char Chuck, Chuck, I beg your pardon. Chuck. Chuck. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Chuck in the You're pink in the sweater. Pink, yes. Now the rest of you do this. Okay. Tiny Tom Thumb said. Oh, cute. 
It's dangerous. It's dangerous being a tiny person. Yesterday, my Uncle Jack was trampled by stampeding blanks. You don't Was stampeded, was trampled by a stampede? Dangerous being a tiny person. Yesterday, my, ja my Uncle Jack was trampled by stampeding blanks. See, it's Tiny Tom Thumb speaking. I like your Bella Lugosi imitation better. <laughs> But that's not bad for a woman your age. I mean, <laughs> okay. No, we don't write. You don't write. Oh, you got one. I hope nobody can see my Charles ear? Nelson Riley. Come over here where there's no microphone. All right. <laughs> Very good. Very good. She got the idea finally, and she's not playing. <laughs> All right. Maggie Moore, Tiny Tom Thumbs said, It's dangerous being a tiny person. Yesterday, my Uncle Jank was, uh, Jack was trampled by stampeding the blanks. <laughs> What's that? Ants. Ants is her answer. Now, Bill, Brett, and Fanny are the three who play. Oh, wow. My Uncle Jack was trampled by stampeding ants, according to her. I had ants, didn't I really? Yeah. Oh, I should have kept with it. Can I get that out of the hole? No, you can't. <laughs> no, you I'm had sorry. You threw it away. Yeah, I blew it. I threw my ants away. Oh, well. I, I had the stampeding thumbs. See, I don't know what that means, but... Uh, Stampeding thumbs? Thumbs. Listen. Yeah. All together. Okay. Kool-Aid. Is Kool-Aid doing this? Yeah. <laughs> Another show. Forget that. Oh, Listen. Well. Ants. Now you had ants and you threw yeah. it away. That's yeah, well, too bad. Well, I had ants in my pants. That's yes. why I threw it away. What do you say, You ever Brett? had thumbs in your pants? No. It's much more. <laughs> 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 it's his only <laughs> rehearsal. Right. right. Okay, okay, Brett, you're up. You know what? It, he isn't even another pretty face. <laughs> <laughs> but my thumbs are pretty. Yeah. 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 All right, Maggie. Yeah. 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 I gotta tell you, when we walked up there, up those stairs, the other night, she says, ants. Yes. That was her answer. My answer, of course, would have been uncles. Uncles, but I of course. Have yeah. that near. All right, what is your answer, Fanny? Well... I don't know. I uh, uh, I said insects, and I drew ants on it. Wait a minute. Well, that's all right. Is that an ant? An ant. Listen, ant. is that an ant? That's Folks? your basic ant. No, can't do that. No. I tell you, it looks more like an arachnid to me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Now, so you've got four, and your question is yet to come, Sonny, and that'll be our second and final round question for you, and you're going to have to go some, but right now we've got to go some and catch up with this message. We are ready. Here we go. Second and final round, Sonny. This is it. You must match four to stay in the game. Five will win another game for you. King Kong said... Oh, yeah! I never should have eaten that peanut butter. Now I've got a blank stuck to the roof of my mouth. <laughs> That's what King Kong said. I never That's should have eaten that. I got mine first. Do I get? Do I get anything? No. I get, get, a, first. Get, a, get a free salami that glows in the dark. Yes. Like a star. Yes, a star. Not to, to, write your answer and leave him alone. I can't think of an answer. John? You must. Think of a question. <laughs> see. Uh, now I've got. See, I never should have eaten that peanut, peanut butter. butter. Now I've got a blank stuck to the roof of my mouth. You know how when you eat peanut butter, it sticks to the roof of your mouth? The old elephant joke? And then something <laughs> else that you might get into your mouth would get stuck to the peanut butter. See, that's the whole idea of the question. I've given you three ways now, Brett. <laughs> oh, okay, hon. Okay. He's writing a letter home. <laughs> All right, everybody is ready, and we'll call on Sonny Hodges. Sonny. King Kong said, I never should have eaten that peanut butter. Now I've got a blank stuck to the roof of my mouth. I've got a blank stuck to the roof of my mouth. Have you ever seen that picture with King Kong? Reruns in the late yeah. show? Oh, you have. Okay, then you know what we're talking about. Um, one more time, could you repeat it? Now I've got a... Sure. King Kong said, I never should have eaten that peanut butter. Now I've got a blank stuck to the roof of my mouth. Um... Banana. What? Banana. 
You're making her feel bad. Yes. She's won six thousand three hundred dollars. That'll make her feel good. Bill, she said she got a banana stuck to the roof of his mouth. There, her, his mouth. Uh, yeah. Her mouth. Well, I had. Uh, I always get this upside down. I had you uh, like because uh, uh, Fay Ray. Remember her? A girl stuck. A girl. Yeah. yeah. I, they liked that one. Yeah. The first one. That's right. Uh, Thank you, everybody. By Jove, I think he's got it. Has he got I it? Got what? Uh, the, the idea of the whole thing. Right. Idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brett. <laughs> what do you say? Now, this answer may seem odd to a lot of people, and I have no intention of explaining it. He got a loaf of bread stuck to the roof. What goes, you said? What goes with peanut butter, didn't you? All right, okay. Charles? I have what I think is an adorable answer. Ha! Volkswagen. A Volkswagen. Well, then if Maggie Moore wins a game, what are the rest of you got there? She needs to be a building play, and that's it. We got it. Come on, Maggie. Congratulations. Okay, you stand by for a moment now. Sonny, you see, King Kong was an enormous fellow. I know. I, and every, I he would open his mouth, an airplane would fly in, and or uh, whatever they had. You had airplane. Yeah, a whole building would fly yeah, in his the mouth. The Empire State anyway, Building. That was the I idea. You had a ball. Well, you did have a ball, and you had six thousand three hundred dollars, right. Sonny. Right. What are you gonna do with that money? I'll visit my sister in Japan. Right. Okay. Bon voyage to Sonny Hodges. <laughs> All right. Here we go, Maggie Moore. Ready? Yeah. Okay, Maggie, we had a bunch in here one day, studio audience, and we uh, put it to them. We got this question we asked them, and we got uh, their response to this. Blank Joe. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500, then $250, and 100 Now, whom do you call on for a little assist? Richard. What do you say, Richard? It was a toy that children play with, G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe, okay. Charles. Charles, have you got one? I got one. Uh, <laughs> set him up. Set him up, Joe. Right. Okay, that's two. Ethel. Ethel. I'd say Joe. So, it's um, Joe, G.I. Joe, and set him up, Joe. G.I. Joe. You want to say that one? G.I. Joe. Okay, that's the one we're looking for. Maggie, of course, hopes it's under the $500 response, but we're going to start at the bottom as usual and reveal, if you would please, the $100 response. <laughs> Little Joe. <laughs> Little Joe was a comic strip character, wasn't he? <laughs> no, no, he, he was, was on, on Bonanza. Oh, Bonanza. Bonanza. Oh, on Bonanza. Bonanza. Yeah, yeah, he was one of the Joe's Cartwrights, right. yeah. Well, he was on this show, wasn't he? I was just going to say he was That's even right. on this show, but I didn't want to embarrass How you. How soon they forget. All right. We are looking for G.I. Joe. Here's a $250 response. Sloppy Joe. Oh, Celebrities are doing great, aren't they, yeah. audience? Okay, oh, last right. chance for G.I. Joe, Maggie. Here's the $500 response. G.I. Now, Maggie, you're up to $600. Yeah. And that means you're going to go at $5,000 now. Remember, to collect that amount, you must match one of our celebrities. Has to be an exact match. Time to choose one. Oh, Richard. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get emotionally involved yeah. now. <laughs> Just because he's a better kisser. Yeah. Okay, here we go. For $5,000 now. Listen carefully. Blank jerk. J E R K. Blank jerk. Okay, he's finished. Now, Maggie, what answer would you like to give us which you think will match Richard? Blank jerk. Oh, I, I'm just blank. I said that. <laughs> I said blank jerk. You see, now you have to say something else. Blank jerk. For some reason, up jerk. Well, 
Well, I guess she drew a blank. Now, that happens occasionally on this uh, no, game. It's, that's, it's... that's a good answer. She works for the airline. She's a flying assistant. Every time she gets in the plane with the pilot, she says, up, jerk. <laughs> yes. Aren't you going to be surprised when Richard holds up his card and it says, Up, jerk? Aren't you, aren't you going to be surprised now? All right, watch this. Can we, can we have a roll of drums? I'll tell you who's going to be even more surprised. Now, wait a minute. Can we have a roll of drums, please? Where the, where's the drummer? Would you roll, roll the drums, will you? I'm sorry before we go any further. What? You mean it's not going to be up, jerk? It was an excellent joke that Charles said. Yes. A little costly at $5,000. <laughs> Soda jerk. Soda jerk! You know... Did you make that joke? I was... I really... I was trying to give it to you through mental telepathy. Because it's the only thing I could think of. Is there any other other than Soda jerk? Yes. What? We all have. There are, just what the one? Besides soda jerk. Oh, soda jerk. Everybody, I and guess that's, that's the jerk. only one. A big jerk, yeah. Big jerk, old well, jerk, new jerk. Many Maddie Moore, you got the $600. going to play another new game jerk, after this jerk. commercial message, and you might win again. Who knows? So come right back, friend. Now we're going to start another game, and we're going to get right to it. And our new player is Ron Valenti. We welcome you. We're going to find out about you as we go along. But we want to get a question in. So I'll push this button and ask you to make a selection, Ron. Come on, B. You want B? All right, here we go. Everybody plays. In Kentucky, it is not unheard of for a man to marry a chicken. <laughs> Divorces, however, are less common because the only way a man can divorce his chicken is to blank her. <laughs> All right. Okay. You learn something every day on this show, don't you? In Kentucky, it is not unheard of for a man to marry a chicken. Divorces, however, are less common because the only way a man can divorce his chicken is to blank her. Now, don't think about it too long. I can't. I can't. Because you're going to strain something. Chicken. Kentucky. You see? You're down there in Kentucky. That's it. You got it. Lay it in there. Once All right. More. Here we go. You've got it. You've got it. Got it. Forget it. Ron Valenti. In Kentucky, it is not unheard of for a man to marry a chicken. I bet you didn't know that, did you? Until today, we didn't know it either. Divorces, however, are less common because the only way a man can divorce his chicken is to blank her. Fry. Fry her. He said, Kentucky fried chicken. Fry her. What do you say, Bill? Oh, well, well I, uh, I just was engaged to a chicken once, and... Uh, yeah. But we never got around this. She was, uh, she was a little stuffy, but I, I think Plucker would be kind of it. Pluck would be the way. All right. That's one answer. Not a bad choice there. Brett? Honey, we thought we all had it this time. A pluck. Really? No, I think his answer is marvelous. I mean, pluck. Pluck is good, but I think fry is better. Ethel, well, show him a good I, I answer. I guess it means the same. I said cooker. How about cook and fry? There's a match, Ron. Richard? Well, probably I have a match as well. Pluck? Yeah. No. Well, no. I just tried for you, Ron. <laughs> right. Are Good you more? offering him a little Kentucky fried chicken? Hi, Brad. Yes, she is. <laughs> <laughs> Fry. Fry. Yeah. Two for you. It was a good answer. They were wrong, Ron. I mean, so. <laughs> Okay, now, we've got a first-round question for you, but not now. Right now, we've got this for you, dear friends. We don't have time for any more game, but we do have time to hear the story of Ron Valenti's life in eight seconds, Ron. <laughs> Tell us well, where you're from and all that. Well, I'm a high school instructor. I teach physical education at Bakersfield. At Bakersville? In Bakersfield. Bakersfield? Yes, sir. Oh, physical ed. Yes, you're sir. head of the department and all that. Uh, no, I'm not. Yeah. Are you married? Yes, I am. I have a uh, lovely wife, Linda. Who is... She's here? Yes, she is. <laughs> all right. Well, it's nice to have you with us, Ron, and we'll look forward to seeing both of you next time. Until next time, this is Gene Rayburn for Match Game 75. Goodbye! This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 75, a Mark Goodson, Bill Tottenham production.
for the new kid on the block, Mary Wick of Doc. We have a tradition on the show. It's a you've seen. happy outfit. Thank you. It's all right. Every time we get a new kid on the block. Oh, I hope so. Female gender. <laughs> have to give her a proper welcome. No fun. Excuse us. <laughs> no funny stuff now. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Folks. Away, away. And no makeup on you either. No makeup on me. Terrific. Thank you very much, my dear. Uh, I'm no good for the rest of the day. Now, Marjorie Hart and Lori Smith are ready. <laughs> Ladies, how much money do you want us to get? $5,600. $5,600. Now, you've had a little time to think about what you can do with that amount, have you? What? A lot of things. Oh, all right. <laughs> She doesn't want to say it. Well, that's all right. You're I don't doing... want to be held to one thing. Okay. My mind changes. You are allowed to change your mind. And you're going to be challenged now by Lori Smith. We found out a little bit about her. Let's just review briefly where you're from and all that, Lori. Oh, I'm from Laverne, California. Mm-hmm. And I'm married and have four kids. Okay. Good luck to both ladies. We'll begin in a moment. But right now, this for you. Now, we're going to start from the top. Da capo, as they say in the music world. Here we go. Laurie, it's your choice, A or B? A. A. Ready? Jack's dog, Fido, is so big. How big is it? Let me tell you how big it is. <laughs> this dog is so big, it trained Jack. Every night, Fido makes Jack blank. <laughs> He's got a big dog, you see. So big that it trained Jack instead of Jack training the dog, you see. So every night Fido makes Jack blank. Makes Jack blank. Blank, right. You, you see, with this, this hairdo, I, I ruin the whole effect if I wear my glasses. Oh. What's your name? <laughs> Is it's Mr. Ray? the washerwoman's yeah. curls there. That oh, that's it's all me. very, oh. very. That's all you. Yes, and Elena oh, did it because she's right. smart and clever. Jimmy Laforte does mine. <laughs> Jimmy LaForge. He's he's better than Elena. Oh, now, wait a minute now, sweetheart. Now we, now we turn it forward, then we snap it in there like that. Would you leave him alone and do he your thing? He just asked me. I was trying oh, to help him out. Poor little devil. Well, ask, ask me. It's my show. Don't oh, bother. Let me ask you. What? You sprayed your mouth before you kissed her. Yes. What does your breath normally smell like? <laughs> Take a chance okay. to be offensive. You know, she is a guest in my house, and I just didn't want to take a chance. Of this, you know? mm -hmm. Hello, Laurie. Mm -hmm. Jack's dog Fido is so big it trained Jack. Every night Fido makes Jack blank. Roll over. I don't like that too much, but that's one of the tricks you teach a dog to do, isn't it? Roll over. What do you well, say, I Joey? I was thinking in, in those terms also. Uh, it m makes him heal. Heel. Oh. Right. Heel is another thing that teach you does. <laughs> All right. What do you say? Well, I have a dog, and just before I left home today, I stepped in a large puddle on the kitchen floor. So I said he made him go on the paper. <laughs> Fido makes Jack go on the paper. Uh -huh. Isn't it cute? Yes, darling. <laughs> Charles, you sure it was the dog? <laughs> no. <laughs> go on the paper. All right. Now, Mary, this yeah. is your first time. I know. Listen, with her hair like that, doesn't Brett look like she has money? Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking her out of my will. Just obviously not. Show and tell. Time. Do you want to know what it is? Yes. All every right. night, Fido makes Jack 
go outdoors, which I think is very good and kind of like the puddle up yes, there. Yes, <laughs> go outdoors. You get the feeling that's the I, same sort of thing. Yes, I got the idea there. Okay. I'm Richard. very enthusiastic. <laughs> No, I'm just a traffic cop here, man. That's I don't true. Have to be enthusiastic. Hey, don't you ever forget it. <laughs> I'm in love with her. Yes. Yeah. Like, now, Richard, we're up to you. Every uh, Jack's dog Fido is so big a train Jack. Every night Fido makes Jack sit up and beg. Sit up and beg. Yeah. Yeah. That's a cute thing. That is. That is sweet. Teaches them to do. What did you say? Well, going along with the puddles. Yeah. I said <laughs> makes him take a walk. See? Take a walk. Yeah. yeah. That's outdoors. That sure. would be the thing. <laughs> That's right. All right. So there, Laurie, none for you. And now we'll see I how Marjorie understand. does with her first rounder. <laughs> well, the first round ones are a little tough, you know. Well, Albert well. said this. He said, I am never going back to that health food restaurant. When I found a bug in my food, the waiter said, don't worry, it's blank. <laughs> he said, I am never going back to that health food restaurant. When I found a bug in my food, the waiter said, don't worry, it's blank. I love him, the nerve of him shielding his answer from me. There are two wonderful choices I can't make up. Remember, it's a health food restaurant. I know it, I know that's the operative phrase. That was good, wasn't it? That's very good. Nice to have you back again. Oh, we haven't seen you in a long time. Where's your spray? <laughs> 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 oh, you. Not true, not true. No. I was for health food before it was chic. While we're waiting, would you like to take my pulse, nurse? Where were you before you came here? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we go, Marjorie. Oh. Albert said, I'm never going back to that health food restaurant. When I found a bug in my food, the waiter said, don't worry, it's... Organic. Organic is... Yeah. Good answer, huh, Joey? See, my right answer would have taken too long. When he found a little bug in there, the waiter said, don't worry, how much can a little bug eat? See, but right. I know that she got to think differently. I said, it's healthy for you. It's healthy for you. Like, right. <coughs> for that kind of money I'm getting, I don't need that, folks. Sit down. What do you say? I told you there were two terrific answers, right? right? One was... Marjorie, hang in with me. <laughs> Organically grown. Organically grown. Okay. Do you have the other terrific answer, Charles? I like the first one, organic. Organic. Yeah. That's good. Oh. Organic. <laughs> what is the other terrific answer? <laughs> Maybe she has. Now. Mary, have you got it? Well, I'll tell you, it depends on how you look at your health food. Roughage. It's roughage. <laughs> I see. Need a little bit of that. Well, it's the first time I was wrong since the World's Fair. <laughs> first time I was wrong since the World's Fair. <laughs> All right. I think you're going to be asked to be a regular here. We That's right. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now and they'll be asking me to leave. <laughs> You're a funny lady. Yes. I said organic. Organic. That's another one. I'll give you up to three. When I found a bug in my food, the waiter said, "Don't worry, it's organic." What do you say? I started to say it was a vegetarian bug, but I didn't. I said it was organic. You thought about it. <laughs> That's four for you, none for you at the end of round one. Now we'll see how round two progresses in a moment or so. But first, this for you. Ready, round two coming up. Here we go. Laurie, A or B? A. A reads as follows. Everybody plays. Okay. Gordon the Grease Monkey yes. is so greasy every night he slides off his blank. That's how greasy he is. Gordon the Grease Monkey Gordon is the so greasy. Monkey. This is a good one. Slides off. Every night he slides off his blank. Okay. I think I got it. Every night he slides off his blank. <laughs> Oh, mercy, I hope it's four. <laughs> My wonderful. Oh, Richard. Wonderful. Track record. <laughs> Richard. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Laurie Smith. Gordon the Grease Monkey is so greasy every night he slides off his... Bed. Bed. 
I think you've got about a third of the audience with you there. Let's see what we have up here. Every, every time I write something clean, they say something dirty. <laughs> so this time I wrote, he slides off his behind. Slides off his... Okay. Oh, it's better than the boo. <laughs> what do you have him sliding off of? I think I've gotten a little closer to the grain. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think this is the definitive answer. I said he slid off his wife. Right. <laughs> play this game better without my glasses? Yes, you do indeed. Charles, you gotta match. she's got to match you right now to stay in the game. What do you say? She's looking for bed. I have to match her? Well, she has to match you. She has to match me? Right. Okay. All right. Scores four to one. You match all the others, we'll have a tie. What do you say, Mary? Well, I'll tell you, there's so many things he can slide off of, you know, depending on how he goes home. Bus, subway, right. almost anything. But I pictured him getting home, getting settled, and sliding off his bed. Oh! oh. <laughs> Four to two. Oh, I got a place over here. All right. If you don't sit on it. You no, know I don't. <laughs> You can put a man in. No, that's okay. No, that's okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's tall. They're hard to find. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Richard. She's looking for a bed. I said wife. Though. Wife. So, Marjorie, what you get? What you have? <laughs> okay, you hang around here, Marjorie, while we say hello to, uh, goodbye to Laurie Smith. <laughs> hello, Laurie Smith, hello. and goodbye, Laurie Smith. We've got gifts for you together with our thanks. Oh, thank you. Nice to have you with us. Goodbye, Bye-bye. Okay. There it is again. Second time up here, Marjorie. Shall we have a go at it? Yeah, I'd love to. All right, we pulled a recent studio audience, Marjorie. We got their best response to this. Joey Blank. <laughs> now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. If you match that middle one, you get $250. The third one gets you $100. Now, you may uh, select three of the six celebrities for a little assist. I'll take Brett. Look at that Joey Bishop. He'll kill me if I don't say that. <laughs> okay. Richard. Joey Lewis. Joey Lewis. Charles. Joey Fay. What? Joey Fay is a, a comedian, and he was and a, a marvelous, of burlesque. Oh, a famous a burlesque comedian. He was married to Barbara Stanwyck, no. as I remember. That yes? was Frank Fay. That was Frank Fay. Well, Frank Fay was married to Barbara Stanwyck. <laughs> Joey Fay. Joey Fay was his brother-in-law by a previous marriage. There. He does funny sneezes, Joey Faye. Yeah. One yeah. of those bits. Now, Marjorie, yeah, you got Bishop, uh, Joey Bishop, Joey Faye, and Joey Lewis. Now, you can choose one of those, or you might have had a better idea. What do you no, say? No, I don't have a better idea. I love Joey Bishop. Okay. Oh! He'll be there somewhere. That was the answer that Brett gave. Let's find out if Joey Bishop is up there. And we're going to find out if he's going to be low man on the totem pole or high man on the totem pole. How much esteem did that bunch have for him? Is he under the $100 number? No. That's oh, they misunderstood. Brown. That was Joey yeah, yeah, Brown. Yeah, I guess that audience right. misunderstood, didn't they? they do, yes. We're looking for Joey Bishop. Let's find out if he's a $250 act. Joey Heatherton. Oh. oh. He was married to Barbara Stanwyck. <laughs> Joey Heatherton was married to Barbara Stanwyck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Barbara Stanwyck. They yes. were seeing the Fay brothers. Have All you? right. Last chance for Joey Bishop. Slide it, Earl. I don't get this showing up. I do not understand this show at all. Why don't you understand this show? She said she loves me and ran to her. Yeah. I'll get to the answer. I'll tell you why. She kisses better than you do. That's why. Oh, He's yeah. a pretty good old kisser, though. That's right. Oh. You're, up, you're up to $6,200. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. The fact that you won the $500 means you're going to play for 10 times that amount, or $5,000. But you've got to match one celebrity to collect. Brett? <laughs> oh, two weeks in a row, I don't know. It's easy, Brett. Sure. You just concentrate and it's get your you ESP to... going. Thought waves. I want to see mm. thought waves going between you and Brett. All right, Marjorie, here it is. It's worth $5,000. Blank writer. 
W R I T E R. Blank writer. Uh, I'm sorry, do it again, would you? A writer. W R I T E R. Writer. Yes. Oh my God. Wait a minute. Just a minute. Now, don't writer, anybody. Don't, don't, don't panic. Don't rush me. Don't. Just, oh, wait a minute. There's so many. Oh, I'm going to go with that. No, I think that. Okay. Oh. She's made up her mind, Marjorie. Now we ask you to make up your mind. Ghost writer. Ooh. Ghost writer. Do I dare her? Yes, let's turn around. Brett, uh, she says ghostwriter will match You know, I thought, I'm sorry, I thought, I thought it was an inside joke. I put typewriter, I'm sorry. Typewriter. Ghostwriter. Typewriter is good. Ghostwriter is good. They're both good. I guess there are a number of others there, yeah, too. Yeah, I thought ghostwriter Screenwriter is, is another one. special. Really... Skywriter. Okay. Now, Marjorie, you got your 6200. You'll need another player later, but right now we want to do a little business with America, okay? Terrific. Shall we present a new player? Let's welcome Mr. Larry Guthrie. You have a friend out there, Larry? Two. Two. Or maybe three. Really? Where are you from, Larry? Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Lived here all my life. What do you do? Well, I uh, work for an organization that does large-scale systems work. and uh, Large-scale systems? Systems work, yes. Whatever that means. Engineering. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't he have beautiful hair? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Looks like who? It took Alan a while. Ludden. He looks a little bit like Alan Ludden, yeah. Really? Why don't you call Betty White? Yeah. yeah. That would be nice. <laughs> it would indeed be yes, nice. Indeed. There. <laughs> Fall off the chair. Be like Alan Ludden. Yeah. <laughs> Do something like that. All right. Larry, we wish you the best of luck. Thank and you. who you got your family out here, friends? My daughter, my son, and my daughter's friend. Okay. Good luck to you. Let's begin, shall we? You may have A or B, Larry. I'd like A. All right. You can have A. It's all right with us. Louise had her face lifted so many times, if you look under her hat, you can see her blank. Mercy! Oh, my Lord. Coming from the medical world, you know. would know about I'd that, like, now, wouldn't you? Louise <laughs> had her face lifted so many times, you look under her hat. If you look hat. under her hat, you can see her blank. I said, take my blank. <laughs> there. <laughs> take back your blank. Yeah. Your blanks will never be. What's <laughs> going on there? Nothing's going on there. The <laughs> lady's oh, molesting me. I got it. If you look under her hat, you can see her blank. All oh, right, we'll goodness. walk over here to Larry Guthrie and see if he's ready. Ready, Larry? Yes. Go. Louise had her face lifted so many times, if you look under her hat, you can see her blank. Scars. <laughs> now, do you know how they do facelifts? Yeah. How? They make an incision and they... Then they pull up the pull skin, up the right? Skin, right. Sew it back together. Okay, now, wait, you see, in a moment, you'll see what I'm trying to get to here, Larry. Joey, show them your answer. Well, <laughs> you, she had so many... She has had her face lifted so many times. If you look under her hat, you can see her... Boobs. Her boobs. I don't need that, folks. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> what do you say? Johnny, that's not an unusual answer. You know, they just start pulling, and the first thing you know, you see those little bosoms right under your head. That's it, right there. <laughs> oh, what they do, don't they make an incision right here and pull the skin up there? Well, you so ought to know, Gene. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> what do you say, know, Charles? Just kidding. You know, no, Brett had so many face things that every time she smiles, she pulls up her stockings. <laughs> Turkey. <laughs> Shin. Shin. All right, what do you say, Mary? Well, being a nurse and all, yes, I know I how these things are done. Down. What are we trying to do? Take my temperature no, down no, there? You not are? at all. No. Uh, whenever she smiles, at that, there was such a facelift, one of those bits, yeah. that you see her mercy. I'm having trouble with the props. Navel! Navel! <laughs> you got the idea. She's yeah. in there. You got the idea? Navel, yes, indeed. You got the idea now, Larry? Yeah. Okay, yeah. you get in the Little swing in the second round. What about Bertha May Belmont? <laughs> Bertha May what? Bell. Belmont. Bertha May Belmont. What do you say? Well, I didn't say anything about the Navy. I said her belly button. Belly button. Same thing. It's rather sweet. Okay. And we'll do one for you in a moment or so, but first we want to do this for you. Right. Here we go. No, we're not going anywhere. We gotta quit right now. Will you come back next time? Sure. Love to. Okay. 
Bring your, your uh, bring your father, Alan Ludden, too. Would you? I'll, I'll try. Right. I'll see if he's in. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Listen. He does look like Alan Ludden, that's he, for sure. He does indeed. I think Alan's moonlighting. <laughs> <laughs> Myself. Well, he is currently between engagements. <clears throat> well, what uh, the night of the week is your show on? On Doc. Saturdays at 8.30 on CBS. CBS, Doc. Same thing next season, same time, I mean. Right. Right. Now, do you wear the same thing all the time, the cute little thing on your head and the white starch? To... Every now and then I get into rather suggestive, low-cut things. I no, I, no, every once in a while I get into civvies, is it, Claire? Yeah. 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 It's a fun show to do. Good. How about this one, now that you've done your first one? Oh, I one? love it. Good. I love it. Good. What All a right. nice audience. Well, you can come back uh, tomorrow. Oh, thank you. Team Raymond here. Join us next time. That's 1076. Goodbye. This is Johnny Olson speaking from X Game 76, a Mark Goodson, Bill Topman production. This program was edited for broadcast. Stay tuned for Title Tales next over most of these CBS stations. Get ready to match the stars from the Mary Tyler Moore Show, Edward Asner. Brett Summer, Charles Nelson Riley, Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, Deborah Lee Scott, Richard Dawson, and Patty Doyle, as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 77. And now, here's the star of Match Game 77, Gene Raymond. Up here. I'd like to say something. What would you like to say? I think That'll be enough. That's all right. Uh, your enthusiasm is appreciated, but there has to be a cutoff point. What? Either at the opening, he's sound asleep or looking off into space or gives you such deafening applause you go deaf, literally. Would you get it together? And get it like together. Some happy medium? Why didn't yes. you bring all that out in hardcover for the Christmas holiday? <laughs> Have you got it together, Ed? Ed, you're skinnier than yeah, you were yes, last time eh? you were here. Ooh, uh, isn't he? You look great. Well, it's here someplace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have the same oh, no, beautiful no, no. body you've always had, Deborah Thank Lee. You. Mm. Thank you. Listen, what's happening with your life? I hear Mary Hartman and Mary Hartman's going off the air. No, it's not. It's well, not. It, Mary Hartman is, but there's going to be a new show, which is the same format, sort of, called Fernwood USA. And that's Starting start... next season. Okay. Is All that right. going to have my good friend Marion Mercer in it? Yes, it is. Oh, I'm... how wonderful. Everybody's going to yeah. be back except Louise. I He's got a winner coming up. I read all about it today in the Where? Sunday New York Times. In the really? 8th. Yes, indeed. Oh, I'll yeah. have to spend a buck. Right. <laughs> Let's say hello to Sandy Neville and Patricia Fernandez. How do you feel? These two ladies are battling it out here. They had to go to a tiebreaker, and we're right in the very middle of the tiebreaker. Patricia Fernandez had her question, and all the celebrities said one thing, and she said another thing. Both answers happen to be good, but that's the way it goes here sometimes. So now she's fall hoping that Sandy Neville will fall on her face, too. We'll see if that happens right after we see about this. All right, here we go. Boing, bing, boing, bing. There it is. The other tie-breaking question. Sandy, this is yours. And all you have to do is match one celebrity to win your second game. Here we go. Long John Silver says, oh, <laughs> I'll never go back to that leg maker again. Instead of a leg of wood, he gave me a leg of blank. <laughs> never go back to that leg maker again. Ah. Oh. How are you, Captain? I'm fine, sir. Good. He doesn't have his hat on today. All right. Sandy Neville. Long John Silver says, oh, I'll never go back to that leg maker again. Instead of a leg of wood, he gave me a leg of blank. A leg of lamb. A leg of lamb. <laughs> All she needs is one leg of lamb to win the game. Aye, me hearty. Aye, aye. <laughs> Do you love me? No. You don't love me. I love you. What do you say we go below yes. decks? And, uh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, the leg maker was on a diet naturally, and that's all he could think of. Lamb wins the game. <laughs> Again. Hang around right there while we say goodbye to Patricia and her long fingernails. She's really got beautiful law and she's a beautiful girl. She's a model and we wish her the best of luck. We're going to send a lot of gifts to you, Patricia. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Now, Sandy. There it is again. We roll it around just for your benefit, Sandy, to see if you could win over $5,000 here. Let's begin by pointing out to you that not too long ago, we polled a bunch of people who came in here. Very high IQ people like these, eh, John? And we put this question to them and said, write down your answer to this. To this. To that. Polly blank. P-O-L-Y hyphen blank. Now, the answer that they wrote down most frequently, their most popular answer, if you match that one, you get $500. Then, for matching the second one, you get 250 and for the third most popular, $100. And uh, three of our six celebrities are permitted to help by suggesting answers. Richard, please. Polyester. Polyester. Oh. I went out with her once. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Nifty dancer and a good kisser, too. Oh, Brett, please. I was going to say Polly Adler, but no, I won't. You won't say that. <laughs> no. I'll say polygraph. Polygraph. Okay, Charles. What is, is it polyunsaturate? Is that it? Polyunsaturate, yes. Unsaturate. Polyunsaturate is one. Well, I think you got three good ones there, but you can reject all of them and give us one of your own. It's up to you, Sandy. Polygraph, polyunsaturate, and polyester. Oh, I'll try polyester. I told you I tried her, and she was okay there. All right, Polly, you don't agree with that, do you? What would you say? Polygraph. Polygraph. Polly wants a cracker. Polly dance? What is Polly that? Who? You're weird. I thought you were smart. Let's begin down at the bottom here as we uh, search for polyester here and reveal the $100 response. Polyester, you got it right off the bat. Another hundred for you. You got $550 all together now. Well, let's see what the next one is. May we see the $250 response. Polygraph is up there. That's the one that Brett gave. Pollyanna, that's another good one. Okay, may we see the big one, Dave? Polyunsaturated. Got a boy, Charles. Yeah. That was a tough one. I thought all three answers were good. Well, one of them came up, so you're going to play for ten times that amount, or a thousand dollars now. And you're going to match one celebrity. Richard, please. Here we go. Worth a thousand. Good luck to you, Sandy. Here it is. It goes like this. Blank jar. J-A-R. Blank jar. 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 Now think about it. Get your ESP flowing over to Richard Dawson, and you'll come up with the same answer that he's got. You pick up a thousand dollars just like that. What do you say? Blank jar. Mason. Mason jar. <laughs> Not a mason jar. Did you have any other idea? No. Now the audience doesn't like that one, but maybe Richard thought of mason jar. Richard, what do you think of it? Well, being a great fan of James, I don't yeah. mason. Just for you. Congratulations, Here we go. Oh, let's all say hello to Chuck Guide. All right, Chuck. Hey, what is your name? Guide. Guide. Okay, Chuck. Where's Chuck from? I live in Simi Valley. Simi Valley. Hold it down, please. Yes, of and course. <laughs> I'm married. I have four children: three boys, one girl, one wife. Yep. And uh, I manage a market. You what? Manage a market. A market? Yes. In Simi Valley somewhere? No, in San Fernando Valley. In the San Fernando Valley. Where is the Simi Valley? It's in Ventura County. Where? Ventura County. Ventura County. Mm -hmm. You go up the freeway? Yes. And 118. 118. What is that? Is that's that the time? Freeway. No, what's that? <laughs> no. That's the freeway. Oh, that's the freeway. Okay. Well, good luck to you, Chuck. Good luck to both of you. Here we go. You may have A or B. B, please. You want B? Okay, Chuck. He wants B. The Godfather said... Oh, no. Hey, baby. Mm. Oh, no. Oh. Mac and Italy, they knew I was tough. <laughs> well, the other guys crushed grapes. I crushed blanks. <laughs> I see that. Mac and Italy, 
Well, back in Italy. Back in Italy, they knew I was tough. While the other guys crushed grapes, I crushed blanks. There they come. That's in Italy. Yes. Well, that's where he's born, you see. No. Kidding. Back in Italy. <laughs> back in Italy. Si. Uh, si, si, signor. Sicilia. <laughs> Sicily. Oh, right. They I... knew I was tough. While the other guys crushed grapes, I crushed blanks. <laughs> What'd you put? I'm ready, Gene. Let's yeah, get I'm on with it. Okay. Come on now, Brett. Unbelievable. Come on, sweetheart. Remember, it's a first round question. Anything that comes to your mind, trust your first instinct, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, here we go, well, Chuck. Wait a week. No, okay. I'm not going to wait. Here we go. The buzzer's going to sound on you, and you're going to be I embarrassed. Can't think of anything. My mind went blank. Godfather said, back in Italy, they knew I was tough while the other guys crushed grapes. I crushed blanks. I crushed heads. Heads! So. Now he got the idea right off the bat. It crushed yeah. skulls. It uh, just took me a while. That's uh, did you, you finally know. think of it? I, I'm, on, I'm on a shakedown cruise here. It's been a while. Now. Yes, of course. Uh, but I, I wanted to go up from something that was tougher than grapes. Oh. Thinking of the Godfather and tough and all that. So I said that he crushed nuts. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay. What do you say? I say, uh, I'm never going to catch on <laughs> to this game. Jeez, you've been such a long... This is the Pathetic Answer Award for 1977. I okay. hate to say it, but it's true. I couldn't think of a thing. I said he crushed cans. Cans. <laughs> You're right, Charles. That was the most pathetic answer oh, we've so had all year. I'm embarrassed. Yes. I'm a mother. The correct answer. Cans. There it is. Okay, Chuck. You can help me. You finally got off the ground there. Now, Deborah Lee, you haven't been around in a while. Maybe you're, are you as rusty as Ed Asner was? No, not quite. Not I'm on, quite. Now, the head is is one big mass bone, right? I mean, it's bones. It's not mine. Bones. No, well, no. Oh. Nice try. Very but that's good. what it is. That's all right. But a specific bone. Mm. What do you say there, Richard? Rock. Rock. <laughs> well, the other guys crushed grapes. <laughs> I did crushed feet. Rock. With his feet. That's the hard way. Oh, so tough. Yes. What do you say there, Blondie? I said he crushed the other guys. The other guys. <laughs> well, Chuck, you got one. You had a good idea, came up with a definitive answer, and they blew it, Chuck, not you. <laughs> You're okay, Chuck. These are the rotten people over here. <clears throat> Who? Too smart for the there. room. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Rosalind Carter said. Uh -huh. Who? After Jimmy's last fireside chat, we ran out of firewood. So I tossed Jimmy's blank into the fire. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, I hate my answer. <laughs> no, that's all right. Uh, Sandy, Ro uh, Rosalind Carter said, after Jimmy's last fireside chat, we ran out of firewood, so I tossed Jimmy's blank into the fire. I think I'm going to be embarrassed like Brett, but I'm going to say toothbrush. His toothbrush. Oh. I'm a mother, too. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I'm a mother, too, when they all That's right, yes. Yeah. yes you get now, there's good. some good possibilities for this one, aren't there, Ed? Would you care to name a few? <laughs> sure. Uh, you may even have one. Uh -huh. Aha! <laughs> Well, after the fireside chat, he no longer needed his speech. Oh, talk to speech in the fire. Uh, okay. All right. They owed you on that a little bit there. Remember, he's a big star. Nighttime. Yeah. <laughs> I don't function well in the day. Too. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I think that this is going to be the popular favorite. I say they tossed his nuts into the fire. His peanuts, right? Okay. <laughs> no, she didn't say peanuts. Well, I guess she did. Okay. Yeah. Because of economy and ecology and all of that, it's only the peanut shells. The peanut shells. Okay. After Jimmy's fireside chat, we ran out of firewood, so I tossed Jimmy's blank into the fire, and she said toothbrush. Well, it's not as bad as hers. <laughs> no, I said sweater. Sweater. That's you okay. like it? Yeah, that's not oh, bad. Oh, good. He took his I own. don't. Well, anything associated with uh, President Carter would be an acceptable answer here, well, right, in that Richard? Case, let's throw in Brother Billy. Brother Billy. Full of wood alcohol. 
Oh. Well, he really would sizzle, wouldn't he? <laughs> what do you say, Patty? Well, for another little glow, you could throw in Miss Lillian. Oh, Miss Lillian. I detect a touch of hostility in the last two answers. Just a touch there. So there we are again in round one. Chuck's ahead, one to nothing. Round two coming up after this. Hurry back. Here we go to round two. Now, Chuck, again, you may have your choice of A or B. Uh, B, please. All right. Everyone except Chuck will play over here. And this is it. Ivan the Terrible said, My real name is Ivan Rustikovashinsky. Rustikovashinsky. Mm -hmm. I got my nickname, The Terrible, on my wedding night when my wife discovered how I blanked. <laughs> Ivan the Terrible said, My real name is Ivan or Ivan. Rusty Kovacinski, I got my nickname The Terrible on my wedding night when my wife discovered how I blanked. Hello, darling. Everybody's ready up there. Terrific. I made. Deborah Lee. Oh, I'm here. What How I made. So that's how I got my nickname The Terrible. How I. On my wedding night when my wife discovered how I. All right? Put it down. Whatever you have in your mind, okay. put it right down there. Oh, gosh, I'm holding it up. I feel like That's red. That's it. Okay, now you got it. That's it. There you go. See how easy it is? Oh, it's so difficult, Chuck. Ivan the Terrible said my real name is Ivan Rustikovashinsky. I got my nickname The Terrible on my wedding night when my wife discovered how I blanked. How I made love. There it is. Now, what's so hard about that, Ed? You're first. Oh, usual. oh, I, I'm truly nonplussed, Gene. I, you're nonplussed. No, I thought that your answer was so superb, I couldn't improve on it. <laughs> My wife discovered how I blinked. <laughs> I understand it, Gene. I'm not going to. I'm not going to ask for an explanation. I'm right. just going to move right on to Brett. Sometimes we're better off not knowing certain right. things. No, I uh, hope this isn't a reflection of your own uh, abilities. I said made love. Made love, okay. Chuck, you're up to two now. Got my nickname, The Terrible, in my wedding night when my wife discovered how I blank. Made love. There it is. You, Chuck. I'm getting into the swing of things. Now, Richard, of course, is a lover. He's a Russian, right? He's a Russian. Made love. Made love. Tovarish. <laughs> Yo, made love Ashinsky. Made love Ashinsky. Oh, he's on the line He got five. You got to do the same now to tie. Here it is. King Kong's grandfather said, "When you're as big as I am, it's tough being old. Every night, I have to look for a swimming pool to soak my blank in." <laughs> King Kong's grandfather said. Grandfather. When you're as big as I am, it's tough being old. Why, every night I have to look for a swimming pool to soak my blank in. Cute. Cute. Yeah. Here we go. Sandy? King Kong's grandfather said, when you're as big as I am, it's tough being old. Every night I have to look for a swimming pool to soak my blank in. My teeth. Teeth. Oh. Now, wait a minute. That's one of the two really good answers that could be responded to in this question, so don't awe her. We've got another audience waiting outside and <laughs> to replace you in case you... What do you say? Teeth is what you want. Yeah, I, uh, well, big fella, you know, the uh, granddad uh, being old and all that, he probably has false dentures and, and yes. all that, and he's, he's really got to get all of his food mashed. And... Uh, uh, I figured that he'd have to soak his banana. Okay. All right, there's one. you got to match it with the five remaining celebrities to stay in the game. What do you say? Oh, I'm sorry, Sandy. I said soak his buns. His buns. So that means... Yeah. 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 Congratulations. Came around there in the blue spot on the carpet, and we'll say goodbye to Sandy Neville, who is leaving here with a total of one thousand five hundred and fifty dollars in our best wishes. Thank, Thank you, Sandy. You. Bye -bye. Goodbye. All right. Hey, Chuck. 
There's the big board where you can win a lot of money here. Let's begin by pointing out to you that not too long ago, had a whole bunch of people in here, and we polled them one by one, and we said, give us your best response to this. Blank does it. And remember now, if you match the answer that they gave us most frequently, you get $500. For matching the second most popular answer, you get $250. And for matching the third, you get $100. And let's see who is going to give you some help here. Uh, Richard, please. Nice and easy does it. Easy, easy. does it. All right. Uh, Brett, please. What, dear? <laughs> Blank uh, does it. Uh, easy does it is one so far. <laughs> Boy, I got no help around. Well, that stinks. <laughs> but you may have to take it in. That does it. That does it. Okay. Patty. Hi. <laughs> what would you like to talk about, you Patty? Uh, bees isn't grammatical, is it? Oh, uh, thank God. There's an answer that. <laughs> does, does it? Wait no. a second. Does, else? does it. Does, does it again. Does, well, it. does, does it. Does, does it. Okay, does, does it. Uh, I guess that's a commercial. D-U-Z does it. Uh, does, does it. Easy, does it. And that does it. Have you got a better one, Chuck? No, I'll take easy, does it. All right. There we go. Looking for easy, does it. May we see the $100 response. Everybody does it. Dave, you must stay awake inside there. You say, as soon as I give you the cue, bing, go. May we see the $250 response. That's better, Dave. Now we're looking for Easy Does It, and here's your last chance. Slide it, Dave. Yeah. Pick up $500, you got a total of $600. And while you're celebrating, we'll pass along the message just for you. Here you go. That is all for today. Join us next time, Match Game 77. See you back in here. Goodbye. To match the stars, Scoey Mitchell, Brett Summer, Charles Nelson Riley, Sharon Farrell, Richard Dawson, and Mary Wicks as we play the star studded big money match game 78. Step right up and get your ice cream bars here. You look like you're doing music now. I, oh, you listen, play. I should that do that music. sometimes, well, shouldn't yeah. I? Oh, yeah. I'm up in it. The mayor's wife, I could play that. Okay, what part do you want to play? Bugsy Malone. Bugsy Malone, That be. and what about you? What part do you want to play? Flow quick. Wrong, oh, yeah. Wrong show. Yeah. <laughs> All right, is there a part in it for you? I don't know, it's a white play, you tell me. Oh, I <laughs> Why is this? It's, uh, nothing. I don't listen at the beginning. I know you don't. I just finally applauded after six years. I, know. I can't applaud but it. You listen. must pay attention because, again, you know, this is our first week with a new star wheel. Yes. Where one of our Who players could, here that? could win $10,000. This being Monday. Well, yeah. It's the the third, second of the week. Fourth day. Fourth. But $10,000 on one single match is a possibility either for Sari Amato or for Jim Smadak over here. Okay. Sherry, the current champ, she has $5,600. We're very happy for you. Oh, I see I she's got a snake ring there. Yeah. Yes. Is there any special uh, significance to that? Uh, I got it in Spain. That's the significance. All right. That's significant. <laughs> yeah. And here is Jim Smadak. Smiling Jim Smadak there. <laughs> He's happy to be here. Pleasure being here. I love California. He's from San Antonio. Oh, oh. Uh -huh. oh, What's that? That's yeah. a good place. Yes. All right. Anything you want to say before we begin, Jim? Oh, I'm ready to get started. All right. We're in the middle of round two here. He's had both of his questions. He has four. She has to match four to tie, five to win. We'll see how it turns out after this. Ready. Here we go. Last question, last round. Sari, it's up to you. Four to tie, five to win. Roy said, I saw the world's 
noisiest snake charmer. To get the snake out of the basket, instead of playing a flute, he played a blank. <laughs> Noisiest. noisiest snake charmer. Instead of playing a flute, he played a blank. Catch. Okay, right in the slot there. Okay. Roy said, I saw the world's noisiest snake charmer. To get the snake out of the basket, instead of playing a flute, he played a blank. Trombone? Trombone. That's noisy. Loud. You get a little over in the audience on that. Yeah. Sorry, they're not too happy with that. She says a trombone, Scoy. She did you... well, too. Yes. She did well. She I got... said tuba. A tuba. <laughs> That's the one that goes um pa pa. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What do you say? Well, I figured you wanted something really rackety, like a drum. Drums would be good. Now, you must match everybody else to stay in the game. Sorry, what do you say, Charles? Chuck chose a trumpet. Trumpet, so that means Jim Smadak wins the game. Win the rest of the game. $600 and our best wishes. Thank you, Sari Amato. Hello, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. Very close. <laughs> We're twinsies. All right. Jim, did you see our big new star wheel come down? It snuck up on you here. You can win as much as $10,000 on a single match. But to begin with, Jim, we're going to do the audience match as we usually do. Here we go. We polled the studio audience not too long ago and said, write down your best answer to this. Black as the flea. <laughs> Black. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, wait a minute. No, no, it's we don't Scully's... mind it when Scoey's not here, but when Scoey's here, we can't... Right, honey? No, it's Scoey's stays... I'm going to call the NAACP. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you call them. Go. <laughs> no, Scoey's staying... Let me hear these answers first. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and they'd better be funny. <laughs> All right. If you match the answer they gave most often, Jim, you get $500. For matching the second most popular answer, you get $250. And then for matching the third most frequent answer, you get $100. And three of our six celebrities will hep you up. Scoey. <laughs> uh, black as night. Yeah! Black as night. Black as night. Okay, there's one. Richard? Black as Scoey. <laughs> Uh, black as black as black as your hat. Black as your hat. Right. That's a black derby, right. the way they wear in England all the time. Well, I think he's got the number one answer. Anyway. Right. So that's... Okay. Charles. This is a wonderful. <laughs> yes. 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 Trust me. It's not prejudice. No. 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 <laughs> Okay, Charles, let's hear it. Thank you from someone who knows yes. about black. <laughs> black is the ace of spades. What? Listen, I got booed on my answer. <laughs> Have you ever seen how big Scoey really is? <laughs> you think I was going to say... Well, he's uh, <laughs> black as your hat. <laughs> May not be a winning answer, but it's a safe answer. That's right. Black as your hat, black as the ace of spades, and black as night of the three. Now, there may be some other good ones that you might want to choose instead of one of those. It's up to you entirely. I'm going to go with black as night. Yeah! Black as night. Are you afraid of Scoey, too? <laughs> Yeah. All right. What'd you say, Charles? Black is cold. Yeah. Black is cold. Yeah. I don't know. I bet yeah. black is nice. Number one, I really You think so? Yes. They yeah. say coal. I want to see All right. We'll find out <laughs> right now what it's going to be. We'll begin at the bottom and reveal the $100 response. Black is coal is the bottom answer there. Black okay. Black is a coal hat. Black is a coal hat. Coal black hat. All right. May we see the next one, please? Black is the ace of spades. What is it? You know, Scoey's gonna be right, and so is Jim. 
Yeah. 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 I bet they are going to be right. Slide it, Ori. Yeah. yeah. Take my advice, it's better to kiss him than fight him. <laughs> He's not a Little bad kisser. Guess <laughs> made that. Jim, you won five hundred dollars. That means the least you'll be playing for is ten times that amount, or five thousand dollars. But you can double that stake if you have a lucky spin on our new star wheel. Get the ten grand, Jim. Stand over here. Don't get it. Don't now, get as it you know, don't do it until I tell you to. And when you do, give it a good whirl because the rule says it must make at least one complete revolution. You know, this has to go all the way around there and at least go past that point. You've got your hand on Richard. There. <laughs> okay. And now one other important thing. If, when you spin the wheel, it stops in any of the gold star areas on anyone's name, the double sign lights up and you'll be playing for double the 5000 or $10,000. Good luck to you. Give it a good hard spin. There we go. Oh, well, that's the hardest spin the double, we've ever had the there. Get the double. Get the double. Yeah, let's see. We get a little double here now. Get the double. Get the double. Get the double. You hit the double means you're going to be playing for $10,000 with Richard Dawson. Are you ready for that? I'm ready. Here we go, Richard. Good luck to you, Jim. This is it. Shoot for blank. Shoot for blank. Shoot for blank. Okay, he's finished. Now, Jim, give us the answer. Ding. That ding. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Quick, aren't they? Never noticed that. Match Richard's answer, and you will get $10,000. Oh, my. Yeah. Here it is. Shoot for? Shoot for the moon. <laughs> Shoot for the moon. Shoot for the moon, he says. Is that a popular saying, Richard? I don't know. We were very close. I said, Shoot for the star. Shoot for the star. Yeah, they were very close. Well, the first thing that came to my mind was stars, and the first thing that came to your mind was moon, right? Right. Well, that's the way we say to play this game. And, oh, uh, you messed up, Maydak. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> no. no, he's got $600. That's not bad, and he's going to meet another player later. He may be up here again. Now we've got this for you. Here we go. Let's welcome our new player here is June Tyson. Hey, baby. So you're June Tyson. Well, aren't you pretty? Tell us about June Tyson. Well, I live in Lakewood, bit, California. Uh, oh, yes, away, of course. Yes. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah. I live in Lakewood, California, mm -hmm. out where the cows are, mm -hmm. close oh, to really? Knoxbury Farm. Yes. Right. Uh -huh. And I have three children and a gorgeous, huh? handsome husband. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can move back over oh, Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Anything else you have to say before we begin? Well, I've traveled halfway around the world. You yeah. have? Uh -huh. Which half? Uh, Europe and part of America. Fascinating travel, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's broadening. <laughs> More ways than one. Yes. You're okay, though, Jim. Good luck to you. Here we go. A or beads for June Tyson? A. A it is. Get the money, Mama. Yes. <laughs> now, this one says, <coughs> Fernando is an unconventional artist. He spreads a canvas on the floor, throws the paint all over it, and then he rubs his blank in it. <laughs> Fernando is an unconventional artist. He puts the paint on the floor, and then he rubs his blank in it. Thank Take you. that to the cashier. All He'll right, give cashier. You back your money. I want my dis uh, deposit back. Is this an S and M question? No, no, no I have nothing to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> an S and 
him? <laughs> what is wrong with him? What are we gonna do with him? All right, June, here we go. Fernando is an unconventional artist. He spreads a canvas on the floor, throws the paint all over it, and then he rubs his blank in it. His model. His what? His model. The model that his he His model? Yes. Oh, yes. Good. Well, I saw that done once. <laughs> Guy dragged this lady all over the canvas, and that's and how he painted. It. That would be, you know, that's been done. Huh? You loved it. <laughs> yes, Goey, show us your answer. Oh, mine was much more conventional. Rubbing his head in it. His head. That would make interesting lines, fine hair lines. Well, he had a very bad temper, so he used to throw these little temper fits, and he used to rub his whole body in it. His whole body. Okay, we're looking for a model. Well? Yes. <laughs> well, no. I'm shooting on Tuesday and Thursday, but Friday I could do it. No, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm serious. Sorry. We wanted a male model. I'm 23, it's, uh, it's, uh, six foot yeah, four. Oh, you're six three. Oh, that's nice. Yes. Thank you. Okay. I, I'll give you my agent later. Right. No. No. Okay, Sharon, we're up to you. Throws a paint all over the floor, and then he rubs his blank in it. Well, I almost said model, but I think he was struggling, so I had him... It's Trish. Couldn't afford a model. No. Right. Okay. A little behind in his work. Gary Ann. Gary Ann. All right, June, we have two of those. Mary, do you offer? I wonder if June's husband is related to that good actress, Cecily. Tyson. No. No? No. Oh, okay, that's okay. You can stay. Uh, his feet. I thought feet? that was the best way. That would make an interesting pattern on that canvas, wouldn't it? So there we are. June, now you got the hang of it, and we'll get back to you in a moment. Right now, this <laughs> Mary. Today's consolation prizes are first. La Machine by Moulinex, the incredible food preparation system for France. It's like having a professional chef right at your side. And a master mechanic shop vac to fix up water, dry materials inside or out. Master mechanic shop vac exclusively from True Value Hardware Store. And a hot lather machine. And Dentine, a shamefully snappy taste of Dentine. While you're chewing Dentine, your breath is mouthwash fresh. Brush your breath with Dentine. And a windbreaker. And a supply of armor all protection. Protects and rejuvenates anything rubber, vinyl, plastic, leather, and wood. Armor all makes your world less rotten. And away we go again with Gene Raven. Okay, Johnny O. If you have around one question, Jim, this is all yours. Listen carefully now. Tony said, my wife is the world's worst driver. She had an accident, and she refused to take the blame. In fact, it's the first time anybody ever tried to sue a blank. <laughs> now, you're not thinking about this. This is a very good question. My wife is a rotten driver. She had an accident, but refused to take the blame. In fact, it's the first time anybody ever tried to sue a blank. Okay. All right. Very good. That's okay, Sharon. All right, Jim Smadak, here we go. Tony said my wife is the world's worst driver. She had an accident. She refused to take the blame. In fact, it's the first time anybody ever tried to sue a blank. Sue a tree. A tree. Okay. Tree, any of those answers, you know, some inanimate object that he struck, she struck with the car would be good. Anything. I said if I had. There's another good one. All right, Brett. Well, the reason I'm very sensitive about this kind of question is, as we all know, I did strike a parked car with my automobile, but I did say telephone. Very call. good. <laughs> telephone pole, tree, fire hydrant, all excellent answers, Charles. <laughs> Light pole. Light pole, another good one. Okay, Sharon will no doubt show us another good one. Right, Sharon? Stop sign. Another good one? Excellent. Richard, you have Think a good that one? I shall never see a woman try to sue a tree. Where's one? For old Jim. Lamp post. Lamp post. Okay. So he ends up with one for his first rounder. One to nothing is a score. Round two is coming up right now. Did it da 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 did it did it did it da 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 did da 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 Okay, June, A or B? Um, I'll try B this time. Yes. You will wake up back there, right? Okay, here we go. Hey, did you hear that Richard Nick got a job at a restaurant? No kidding. Yes. Well, it didn't work out. When they assigned him his job, he said, I am not a blank. <laughs> there it is. When they 
they assign him a job in the restaurant. He says, I am not a blank. What? I didn't hear it. The you first didn't hear it. When they assigned him Richard his Nixon job. supposedly got a job in a restaurant. In a restaurant. And when they assigned him his job in the restaurant, he said, I am not a blank. Do you understand that, anybody? I got it. Oh, terrific. All right. This one is so easy, I'm surprised it's taking so long. Well, I've gotten a little... Uh, Richard Nixon got a job at a restaurant, but it didn't work out. When they assigned him his job, he said, I am not a blank. In a restaurant. That's right, he was in a restaurant. A job in a restaurant. You know, we're making this up. It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's not really true. Mr. Nixon really did not get a job. We're just saying that. Yeah. Say that. Uh -huh. They wouldn't hire him. How do you know, Jane? When they assigned him his job, he said, I am not a blank. Oh, I am not a blank. You must say something before... I am not a waiter. Okay. That's her answer. Scoy, did you get it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Did you get it? Oh, you no, finally I, got it? Yeah, I just got it. You just got it? Yeah. Who I, gave it to you? Richard, explain oh, it to me. Right. Uh, I, I wrote available. I am not available. I'm not available. Okay. That's great. All right, listen, you're all... Uh, go ahead, show us your answer. I just got it, too, because Dickie showed it to us. I said, I'm not a Democrat. <laughs> I'm not a Democrat. Now can I show the award? Pathetic answer award. All right. She didn't understand it. What do you say? I am not she a She got the answer. Doesn't everybody in America remember his saying, Oh, wow. he's gone. Quiet when the star is speaking. he's going to do a good imitation. No, I'm not going to do any imitation, but remember that famous phrase of his where he says, oh, I am not a crook. Yeah. All we wanted him to say is, I am not a cook. Don't you understand, you dummies? Now, that's what you to understand. Stinks. That's okay. what they thought about that great answer. What do you say? <laughs> I didn't think he'd mind being a waiter, but I think he thought he'd hate being I a I am bus not a busboy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear me. How he did the me? job and 18 dishes were missing. I'm not uh -huh. a cook. I'm not a cook. Right. Must okay, match. now, June, you've got a match. Mary to stay it in the game. It took me a while, but I got cook. Cook, all right. So that means I'm waiting for me. Gifts to you. We've got all kinds of things. A set of dishware, pantyhose, 87 pounds of coffee, you know. What are you doing? Okay. There's our new star wheel now. And you get ready for that because with one spin of that wheel, you could win $10,000. But first. Here we go. I mean, there we go. Are you all quite finished? Is there anything else anyone would like to say before we say goodbye? No, well then let's say goodbye. Okay. Goodbye. Right. Goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye -bye. Join us next time. Please do. For Match Game 78. Team Ladies and Gentlemen. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 78. A Mark Goodson, Bill Sodman production. This program was edited and broadcast. It's time for the match game. Hollywood Squares. Our with the Falcon Press, Abby Dalton. Phyllis Diller! From Spain, Carlo Imperato! Charles Nelson Riley! From the Hotel Nathan Cook! The stars of the match game, Hollywood Squares Hour, Gene Rayburn and John Bowman. Hello, hello. Thank you. Thank you.
This could take some nerve on our part. You're sure we want to do this now? No. I don't know. What kind of bird are you? <laughs> I'm a feather-breasted dinghy bird. <laughs> I know you're dinghy. <laughs> what, uh... Habitat Hollywood. Ah. Habitat, <laughs> Habitat. What's, uh... What's underneath? Nothing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's your real hair. That's your real hair, right? Listen, I got news. I'm flat, but I'm fluffy. <laughs> Yes, is that your real hair? That's right. No, I'm crested. Birds are crested. Right. Sure, I'm a feather-breasted dingle bird that's crested. 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 <laughs> okay. I hope it doesn't affect your responses there, because this is a very serious game. I know that. All right. Keep an eye on her, Nathan. I, I can't help it. All right. <laughs> Shall we have a go at it? You ready down here? Sure. All right. Let's greet our two players over here. We have Jin Hewson Ott. Is that right? Hewson Ott. Hewson Ott. And Ronnie Burke. Welcome. A little brisk round of applause here. Jin Hewson Ott. Don't run into hyphenated names very often. Neither do I. Yes. Are you married? Yes, I am. What was your other name? That is my maiden name. Houston is my maiden name. Audie is my married name. Oh, so I see. Okay, I understand what you've done. Where do you live, Jen? I'm living in Moore Park at present. I'm moving to Nebraska in August. Why? I'm starting dental school there. I'm studying to be a maxillofacial surgeon with a specialty in orthognathics. Good for you. That sounds like oh, it's a you. lot of work. I hope to win some money here, okay? Thank you. All right. Now, Ronnie, let's hear about you, please. I live in Laguna Beach. Uh, I study acting. Uh, I'm crazy about fashion, and uh, my favorite hobby is shopping. <laughs> well, you weren't great up to that last one, right? All right. You're gonna have to win some money to do some shopping, Ronnie. All okay. right. Okay. All right. Good luck to you. We'll reveal the first round questions here. There it is. Now, Jin, uh, you won the toss. You'll be going first here. Remember, we're we're gonna play three rounds, and the winner will go on to challenge our. Re turning champion on Hollywood Squares for a chance of win up to $30,000. Do you want A or B? A, please. A it is for you, Jin. <coughs> is Jin uh, short for anything? Ginny. Yeah, bourbon. Ginny? For bourbon. Intoxicating. Yeah. <laughs> Little Billy said, I went to a girl swapping party and made a really great swap. Mm. I swapped my girlfriend for a blink. <laughs> Little Billy. Little oh, Little Billy. Billy. Little, little oh. Billy. Oh, all righty. Here we go, Carlo. Little Billy said, I went to a girl swapping party. And I made a really great swap. I swapped my girlfriend for a blank. Female dog. I'm on the wrong there's, uh, <laughs> there's the editorial comment, which I shall refrain from making. All right. She said a dog. What do you say, Nathan? I said a frog. A frog, yeah. Well. Rhymes to get half credit. <laughs> right. What do you say? I said a bike. A bike is good. Anything like that that a kid would go for. Well, I think I match a puppy. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Give a weird, rotten answer and score. <laughs> I don't understand this game. I better give that? a weird, rotten answer and don't score. Okay. No, I, I sort of like this, actually. Swap my girlfriend for a Smurf. A Smurf. <laughs> Ten-year-old boy would be interested in that. Mixed. Now, Carlo. I said a little puppy. Great! I am in shock. Charles? I'm in shock because it's an amazing day when you can meet a pink-crested, breasted dinghy bird <laughs> yeah. and see a six-foot-four man with a pink corsage. I said skateboard. Skateboard is a good response. So, Jim, you pick up two. You're going to fool me. Ronnie, this is yours. Jack said, 
I think it was a mistake inviting my ex-wife to the wedding. Mm. Instead of rice, she threw blanks. <laughs> You've been married. <laughs> oh, sometimes too humorous to mention. When my mother-in-law got, when my mother-in-law yeah. got married, yes, she was so fat they threw puffed rice. <laughs> I like it. I think you're ready. <laughs> Ronnie, Jack said I think it was a mistake inviting my ex-wife to my wedding. Instead of rice, she threw blanks. The children. <laughs> Ronnie, I guarantee you that's going to be the funniest answer we've got in this round. Forget me. Can you top this? Can you top this? I'm close. I'm the word close. Rocks. Rocks. Can you top this? Are you kidding? They like rocks. BBs. BBs. All right. I know. What do you say? Well, I thought well, empties, bottles. Empty bottles. <laughs> She's got. She threw the children. What do you say, John? Oh, I said she threw darts. All right. A good one. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's all in this this move. will get them every time. Carlo Imperato. I said rocks. Hey. Rocks. Got two of those so far. Now, Chuck, we come to you. I copied from him. All right. <laughs> Three of those. So there's round one. Two to nothing to score. Jim's favor. Round two will be long in a moment or so. First, this for you. Now here we go to round two. Jane. Jane, you're ahead, you go first. I'll go with A again, please, Jane. A. All right, A it is for you. Hey, did you hear about the worst Peanuts TV special ever? I mean, really bad. It's called Snoopy Gets Blank. <laughs> <laughs> It's all right. No, it doesn't stink. <laughs> you seem to be having difficulty with this. <laughs> You're having a good time, are you? You finally got one. I had a spell drawn. Oh, all right. All right, Chuck. Yo! Okay, sailor. Jim. It's about the worst Peanuts TV special. You know what Peanuts is, of course. Mm -hmm. It's called Snoopy Gets Blank. Lucy? Snoopy Gets Lucy. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Hold everything. Don't boo her, because you boo her to the last time she gave a rotten answer and she matched two stars. <laughs> now she gives her another rotten answer, she's probably going to match two more. No. All right. Nathan, you're up first. What do you she say to that? She wasn't watching television. Snoopy. Got rabies. Here we got rabies. Oh, that's good. All right. What do you say? <laughs> well, that's sort of the herpes of the dog dumb. <laughs> rabies. Rabies. <laughs> so we got two of those. John, we come to you. <clears throat> well, the object here was to be boring, right? I think I've succeeded. <laughs> I said Snoopy gets a flea bath. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Boring. My public. That's bad. What have you got for us, Chuck? I've been on this program 10 years, and Snoopy gets a flea bath is one of the worst <laughs> answers. <laughs> this is undoubtedly the special. If none of you have seen it, it's terrific. Uh, Snoopy gets arrested for biting a nun. Very good. <laughs> I like this one. <laughs> Look at that. He's got it. All right. <laughs> so, Jim, you stay at two. Now, Ronnie, let's see if you do a little catching up here. Here's your round two question. Pete said, Yeah. My wife is so afraid I'll leave her. Every night she blanks me to the bed. <laughs> every night. My wife's so afraid I'll leave her. Every night she blanks me to the bed. Good. Okay. 
right? That was my first kiss. Okay, ready down here? No, wait. Carlo. Ronnie. Carlo. Pete said, my wife is so afraid I'll leave her. Every night she blanks me to the bed. Handcuffs? Handcuffs is Ronnie's answer. That's okay. Pretty good answer, right? That's a great answer. That's a great answer, but... You know, I thought she was really afraid of losing you, that she might glue me to the oh. bed. <laughs> Glues to the bed? <laughs> what kind of kinky stuff is that, Nathan? What do you say? This is even kinkier. Oh, really? <coughs> Change. Change. Oh, right. Oh. Up, Dave. Come on. That's why the marriage was a long-lasting one. What have you got? Well, I had handcuffed. I was going to put ties. Handcuff or change? Yes. Yeah, well, that's Whichever it. Right. You're, you yeah. like the best. <laughs> yeah. Whatever turn you on. That's one. So the score is now two to one. That's one. Well, I sure hope Ronnie Burks doesn't get whipped because too many of us said chains. Oh. Uh-huh. What do you got, Carlo? Ties. He says ties to the bed. And Charles says? Chains. Chains. Well, I guess they're in the whips and chains over there. Okay. Two to one the score. Jim's favorite. Round three. Last round right after this. Here we go with the third and final round. Jim, you're still ahead. You go first. I think I'll try B this time. You want B? All right, you got B, Jim. <coughs> Charlie the chicken plucker. <laughs> Good old Charlie. Plucked all the farmer's chickens. And then he plucked the farmer's blank. <laughs> Charlie the chicken plucker plucked all the farmer's chickens. Then he plucked the farmer's blank. Uh, that's got, well, what can I tell you? It's life on the farm. <laughs> all right, gang, you ready? Here we go, Jim. Charlie the chicken plucker plucked all the farmer's chickens. Then he plucked the farmer's blank. Wife? Wife is what Jim said. Okay. Well, wife was one of the possibilities. It's one of two possibilities. Uh, well, it was one of one possibility okay, for me. Uh, you got three. Wife or daughter? Well, you, you know that I knew Charlie intimately. Oh, you did? <laughs> Please. Oh, of course. Right. Wife. All right. right. How about you and Charlie's wife? But can he pluck a pink-crested dingleberg? <laughs> I, I chose the other one, the farmer's daughter. All right. She's prettier. Well, it's more of an expression. She's got more farmer's, of a daughter. farmer's daughter. Farmer's daughter. Chuck, what do you say? Chuck, yo, Gene. Chuck said daughter, too. Okay. <laughs> now, Ronnie, so you need three to tie and four to win. Here it is. Orson Welles said... What did... <laughs> what did Orson Welles say? <laughs> All of us, ready? One, two, three. What did Orson Welles say? I love taking charge, Gene. <laughs> Have you ever eaten a microphone? Once, but it was. Here it comes. <laughs> no, here's what he said. I got my start in show business as a stand-in. I didn't stand in for actors. I stood in for blanks. Orson Welles. Okay, Chuck. Here we go, Ronnie. Orson Welles said, Orson Welles said, I got my start in show business as a stand-in. I didn't stand in for actors. I stood in for blanks. Corpse? Well, you're going to have a very successful career as an actress. 
but not here. Nathan, you need three to tie, four to win. known to many as the Prince of... Wales. Prince of Wales. All right, Prince of Wales. What do you say? And it's amazing. We didn't compare. I came up with that on my oh, own. You did. <laughs> now, you got to match two down here to stay in the game. Or three down here. What do uh, you I say? He didn't stand in for the actors. He stood in for the sets. All right, that means Jim wins the game. Sets. Come on down, Jim. Right there, if you would, please. Well, good luck to you in your career in the theater. We're going to send some gifts to you for the match game. Thank Ronnie you. Burke, ladies and gentlemen. Hey there. Hey. How do you feel? <laughs> Great. Okay. Now we're going to switch to Hollywood Squares and bring in the rest of the set. Here it comes. Three more stars will appear as if by magic. John and I will trade places. And we've got a lot of excitement coming along. Don't go away. We'll be right back. A member of our studio audience will receive Whirlpool's microwave oven with microcomputer push-button control. Program all cooking cycles, times, and power with a touch of your fingertip. Convenient to frost guide and bi-level cooking rack furnished by Whirlpool. It's time for more of the match game. Hollywood Square. Our with from too close for comfort, Lydia Cornell. From St. Elsewhere, Christina Pickles. From Happy Days, Hanson Williams. And taking over the star of the Hollywood Square, John Bowman. And return with us in just a couple of minutes to play Hollywood Square. See you then. And now, John Bowman and the Hollywood Square. Sure, go ahead. Go ahead, get through match game and make me have to pronounce all those names. <laughs> Jin Hewson Adi, how's that? Excellent, excellent. Okay, well, you played quite excellently as well, and you have made it onto Hollywood Squares. Now we have three brand new celebrities joining, joining us. They are Anson Williams, Howdy. Christina Pickles. And Lydia Cornell. I have a very sad announcement to make at this point in our program, uh, especially sad for all the gentlemen out there. Lydia Cornell is soon to be married. Oh. That's not what she told what me. What a bummer! <laughs> now, who's the lucky guy? Oh, um, his name is Truett Bell. Joseph Truett Bell. He's from Kentucky, and... Um... I have a ring, but we haven't set the date, so I'll just hold on to the ring. <laughs> well, he really is a lucky guy, and you're a lucky gal to be getting through Match Game. Let's zip right on to Hollywood Squares. Here we go. And now, a woman who has made my life greatly easier than Jin Husanati, <laughs> our defending champion, Linda Smith. <laughs> It's his second day on the program. Her total so far, $1,275. Which means, in essence, you got through uh, Hollywood Squares okay, but didn't click on the super match. But today is another day. Uh, you certainly make a pretty picture, Linda. Why don't you give us your resume once again? Okay, I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah, mm -hmm. originally. I've been living out here for the past two years, studying acting. I teach English at um, an international school of languages, and I'm in love. Oh, <laughs> much like Lydia Cornell, I suppose. Now you, however, unlike Lydia Cornell, get a chance to go on to Supermatch, which can be worth up to $30,000 should you win the Hollywood Squares. Jin will have something to say about that. Our first game is worth $100, $25 for every square. As always, Linda, you are the champ. You get to start, pick a star, and let's go. Jean, please. Jean Rayburn. I'm ready. <laughs> In the original comic strip, what did Popeye eat to gain strength? Was it spinach or was it garlic? The answer is so obvious that I think there must be some trick to it, but it's, everyone knows it. You know, when he says, I'm Popeye the Sailor Man, I'm Popeye the Sailor Man, I fight to the finish because I eat my spinach. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. <laughs> That's my answer. 
Yeah. Encore, encore. <laughs> uncle, uncle. Agree or disagree? He says it was spinach that, that Popeye ate. I disagree. In the original comic strip, well, this is one of those questions, guys, but in the original comic strip, Popeye did eat spinach. So you should have agreed with Gene and your, and your opponent gets the first square. That's one of those questions that we put in to keep you honest sometimes. Gin, your move. I'd like Phyllis, please. Phyllis Diller. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not. I gotta tell you, John, they were a gift from Barbara Streisand. They, they were left over from Yentl. <laughs> Not to change the subject, no. Phyllis. Who usually initiates romance in the gorilla world? The female or the male? Why do you ask me these questions? <laughs> oh, my God. I, I, uh, I haven't spent that much time with my husband's family. I, I, uh, I, I spent a lot of money getting electrolysis for his mother. <laughs> but she still has those eyebrows that go all the way around. <laughs> what do you say? The female. The female initiates romance in the gorilla world. Agree or disagree, Jin? I agree. It is the female. How liberating. You are right to agree, and you get the square. The challenger is off to a rousing start, Linda Smith. Try and stop her. Okay, Lydia to block, please. Okay, you missed this one. The first game goes to Jen in a clean sweep. Lydia Cornell, your dog has a tick. Should you grasp it between your thumb and forefinger and gently pull it out, or should you zap it with a lighted cigarette? <laughs> oh, how gross. <laughs> Well, no, I would never touch my dog with a lighted cigarette. I think, I think, yeah, that's right. You're supposed to pluck them, but I'd wear rubber gloves. <laughs> I think she something. said, grasp it between your Which thumb and forefinger and gently pull it out. Agree or disagree, Linda? I agree. You should grasp it between the thumb and forefinger and gently pull it out. You're right to agree. You get the square and you do block. <laughs> Which means we have a tight $100 game going and we're going to find out what happens in it right after this. Be there. Stay tuned for more of the match game, Hollywood Squares Hour. Now, back to John Bauman and the Hollywood Squares. Thank you. When we left our heroes, there was a critical block uh, performed by our defending champ, and that leaves us with Jin's move for an O. I'd like to go with Nathan, please. Aha. Uh -huh. Nathan Corbett. <laughs> Yes. Oh. <laughs> Your cat falls asleep. Cat? Cat. Mm -hmm. And wakes up about 1,000 times a day. Falls asleep and wakes up about 1,000 times a day. Should you rush him to the vet? Or are these normal cat naps? If he wakes up 1,000 times a day, you got to say something's wrong with the cat. Take him to the doctor. Agree or disagree, Jen? I disagree. If your cat falls asleep and wakes up 1,000 times a day, these are normal catnaps. You are right to disagree, and you get the square. That is good playing, because that shocked me when I looked at it. That's absolutely normal. Uh-huh. Things are normal, but not so good for you, Linda Smith. Pick a star. Anson DeBlock, please. All right. Anson Williams. Yeah. You're going into the Marines. No, I'm not. <laughs> okay, next question. No, you are. Pretend you're going into the yes. Marines. Mm -hmm. Do you have to leave your teddy bear at home? Yeah. Never. Or can Teddy go into the Marines with you? <laughs> Gosh. Teddy, huh? Um... I gotta tell you, it's kind of tough, but you, you know, the Marines, when, when you go in, they kind of have to, you know, tear you down so you start over so you deal as a unit, not as an individual. And, you know, that individual, Teddy, could really upset the entire troop, so um, <laughs> I'd have to say you gotta leave Teddy home, but on leave, you can do what you want. He says you have to leave your teddy bear at home when you go into the Marines. What do you say to Block, Linda? Agree or disagree? I agree. You have to leave your teddy oh, home. Oh, no. 
But you were right. You get the square, you do block, and that leaves us with an interesting looking configuration on that board for you, Jim. Abby to win, please. All right, Abby Dalton. <laughs> she couldn't block you here. Which of these composers has written more symphonies? Ludwig van Beethoven or Red Skelton? <coughs> Red Skelton? Mm -hmm. <laughs> symphonies? Mm -hmm. Published? <clears throat> I think I'd have to say Beethoven. Unless it's some sort of trick question. <laughs> she says, Ludwig van Beethoven has written more symphonies. Agree or disagree, Jin, for I, the game? I agree. Red Skelton has written more symphonies than Ludwig van Beethoven. He is a composer. Uh, you should have disagreed. Your opponent gets the square. He has written 64 symphonies. Beethoven only nine. But, of course, what a nine they were. <laughs> Good for you, Linda. <laughs> on that move, pick a star on your own now. Christina to win. All right, she had two choices and chose Christina Pickles from St. Elsewhere. Can a lawyer get a radio with a wave band that tunes into ambulances? Or can't those broadcasts be legally heard by lawyers? I don't understand the question. <laughs> <laughs> Say it all again. Neither do I, and I just read it. Can a lawyer get a radio with a wave band that tunes into ambulances? Or can't those broadcasts be legally heard by lawyers? Oh, I understand the question now, and I would say that they cannot. She says lawyers cannot tune into ambulances on their radio. Agree or disagree, Linda? For the game. I'll agree. It is okay to receive those broadcasts. You should have disagreed. Your opponent gets that square and blocks you there. All right, your move, Jen, in a topsy-turvy struggle. Carlo to win. Carlo Imperato from fame. Who's got more legs? One shrimp or four munchkins? A shrimp. Agree or disagree, Jin, for the game. Oh, darn. <laughs> Think about it. He says one shrimp has more legs than four munchkins. I disagree. One shrimp has more legs than four munchkins. You should have agreed with Carlo. Your opponent gets that square and blocks you there. One shrimp has ten legs. Four munchkins, figure it out for yourself. <laughs> Linda, we've got a completely full board except for one place. You will pick the star as a formality. Okay, I'll go with Charles to win. Mr. Nelson Riley, it's very simple. You get the square. You win the game, you miss it. Jin takes the game. Do you have to be a Mormon to be in the Mormon Tabernacle Choir? Or would they let in a Baptist with a great voice? Going in a showbiz way, I would say they would let a Baptist in with a great voice. Or a half great voice. Or if he could carry a tune. <laughs> if he could wear the costume. <laughs> In essence, sure. Charles has said, you do not have to be a Mormon to be in the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. What do you say for the game, Linda? I should know this, but I don't. I'm going to agree with Charles. She is from Utah. You have to be a Mormon to get into the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. Don't go back to Utah soon. You should have disagreed with Charles. Your opponent gets the square and wins the game. Wow. A grueling and complicated $100 game, but Jin has taken it. We will be back to find out what happens on the day right after this. 225 for the challenger, 100 for the champ, but that has not decided the day by any means because we're going to start a $200 game right off the bat with you, Linda Smith. Okay, I'll go with Phyllis. Phyllis Diller in the center square. You like to wear very sheer blouses. <laughs> According to Mademoiselle, should you wear a bra that matches the color of your blouse or one that matches the color of your skin? Well, of course, I don't have this problem at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you should, Mademoiselle would say to wear one that matches the color of your skin. Agree or disagree, Linda? I agree. Mademoiselle would say to wear one that matches the color of your skin. You are perfectly right to agree, and you get the first square. Jean Husanati, your move. Pick a star for an O. Jean, please. Jean Rayburn. Yes. What did Bing Crosby's butler, Alan Fisher, go on to become? A U.S. congressman, 
or Prince Charles's butler? I have no idea. Hazard a guess. Let's see now. A U.S. congressman. Right. Or Prince Charles's butler. That name, you know, I, I've never seen that name in the news in, mm -hmm. uh, in American politics, so I would say he went on to be Prince Charles's butler. Agree or disagree, Jen? I'll agree. He went on to become Prince Charles's butler. Yes, you're right to agree. You kind of reasoned it out along with Jane, and you get the square. Good observation. Yeah. Linda Smith, an X and an O are on the board, and it is your move. Pick a star. Anson, please. Anson Williams. Are the home factories of the Goodyear, Goodrich, and Firestone tire companies in different cities? Or do all these rubber companies band together in Akron? No, they hate each other. Are you kidding? No, in fact, one of the tire companies is right there in East Los Angeles. Um, no, they are in different parts of this country, far from each other. He says Goodyear, Goodrich, and Firestone are located in different cities. Agree or disagree, Linda? I agree. They are all in Akron. You should have disagreed, and your opponent gets that square. She has the lead, and she's got a couple of O's. Jin Husanati, make your move. Nathan to win, please. This would give you the game and a pretty big lead at this point in the day. <clears throat> Nathan Cook. The two little minks you've been raising are fully mature, and you're ready to make yourself a coat. <laughs> Is their fur the only thing that's usable? Or can you make a nice meal of mink meat? Ew. Mink meat. <laughs> Ew. Mink meat. No. I'm sorry, John. I'm not eating no minks. I gotta go with fur, maybe a little mink oil or something, but no mink meat, no. He says the fur on the mink is the only thing that's usable. Agree or disagree for the game, Jin? I'll agree with Nathan. You can make a nice meal of mink meat. You should have you disagreed nice with meal. Nathan. Your opponent gets that square and blocks you there. It's easier to cook a meal of mink meat than it is to say it, I think. Linda Smith, that was a bit of a turnaround for you. Pick a star. Okay, Abby to win, please. This would give you okay. the game and the lead. Abby Dalton, you've just put a little gray poupon mustard on your hot dog. Where do you suppose it's made? In Dijon, France? Or in Oxnard, California? <laughs> uh, it's, it's made in France. She says, Poupon mustard is made in Dijon, France. Agree or disagree, Linda? For the game. I agree. Poupon mustard is made in Oxnard, California. <laughs> <laughs> you should have disagreed with Abby. Your opponent gets it. It's great out here, Dijon. Bon appétit, vous gettez le square. Jim Yusanati, make Come your on. move. <laughs> <laughs> Pick a start. Dancy, dancy. Come on, Jim. Lydia, please. All right, Lydia Cornell. When would a Houston, an Eastern hog-nosed snake Fake convulsions and play dead. <laughs> Are you question. sure you weren't meaning to pick Charles for this question? <laughs> when would an Eastern hog know snake, snake fake convulsions and play dead? When he's not in the mood for his girlfriend's advances or when a mongoose is after him? Oh, when a mongoose is after him, definitely. Agree or disagree, Jen? I agree. It is when a mongoose is after him. You are right to agree. And you get that square as well. That could shake you up. All right, champ, a defensive position for you. Pick a star. Christina, please. Christina Pickles for a block. You missed this one. It's a pretty big lead for Jen. You just bought an iron pan, Christina. According to grandmother's household hints, what should you boil in it to get rid of the iron taste? A handful of hay or a quart of mouthwash? <laughs> Neither. <laughs> I promise it's one or the other. Did you say boil in it? Yes, you should boil this in it. I would say that you can't boil hay, so it would have to be mouthwash. <laughs> she says you should boil a quart of mouthwash in that iron pan. Oh, yeah, wait yes. a, oh you could put you it do, in you water. Can't put it in water. Oh, then it's got to be the hay. All right, she's changed her mind and gone with the handful of hay and a bit of water. Agree or disagree, Linda Smith, to block. A critical block at this point um, in the day. Mouthwash or boiling 
I'm going to disagree. You should put in a handful of hay. You should have agreed with Christina Pickle's final choice. Your opponent gets that square and wins the game. And the bell means that time is up. She has done it. New champ is Jin Husanati. Five hundred and fifty dollars. Congratulations. She said she didn't expect to get through match game. And look at this. Here you are through Hollywood Squares. Make your way over there. Join Jean. Get set for your shot at the big money. Congratulations. Good sport. Ah. Well, she had you on the defensive, really, for most of the day. Uh, your total leaving here is $1,425. You're a real good champ, Linda Smith, and you're lovely. Thanks for being here. Thank you. I had a great time. Gene, take it away. Here we are with the new champ. We'll be back with her and the nine stars. We're going to the really big dough right after this. And now, here to play the super match is Gene Rayburn. Thank you, Gene Wood. Ready? <laughs> you bet. Woo! She's ready and she's eager and ready to have a go at it. So let's find out if she's going to win. You. The $30,000 on this super match. Good luck to you, Jen. Here it is. We polled an audience not too long ago and said, write down your best answer to this. Blank made. If you give us the answer they chose, most frequently, you get $1,000. For the next most popular, $500. And for the third, $250. Now, any three of our nine stars are allowed to offer a little assistance here in the way of suggested answers. Whom do you call on? Carlo, please. Um, French made. French made. All right, there's one. John? Old maid. Okay, you've got two. Nathan. Milk maid. So you have milk maid, old maid, and French maid. A lot of good ones. Now you have to make an important decision. Think it over. Choose one of those or create French one of your maid. own invention. I think I'm going to go with old. Old maid. Hope so. All right, that was John's answer. Let's find out if old maid is up there. The audience thinks you're right. Let's see about that. We'll go down to the bottom and reveal a $250 response. Minute Maid is there. Familiar name? All right, the $500 response says... Old Maid, you've got $500. I think it's me. There's your $500. What's on top? Housemaid. Or meter. I like All right, meter slide maid. the big one. Meter maid. Wow. Meter. meter maid. Oh. And meter maid. Oh meter yeah. maid. All right, so you've got $500. Now it's time for the head-to-head -head match with any star of your choosing. And after you've made your decision and chosen a star, why, uh, we'll ask that star to reveal the hidden number. It'll be a 10, a 20, and somewhere up there is one, just one, 30. We'll multiply your $500 by whatever number is revealed. Okay, Jim, choose a star. Carlo. Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Carlo, do do ready, this? set, go. Ten. So that means you're playing for five thousand dollars. That's not a bad sum. Five thousand. Here we go. Ready, Carlo? Yes. Turn blank. T U R N blank. Turn blank. Come on, Jim. All right. Carlo is ready. He's eager to match you, or vice versa. What do you say for the 5000 Table. Turntable. All right. Carlo, she says turntable will match you for the $5,000. What do you say to that? I said turn around. Turn around. Uh, uh, Why did you say that? I knew that was in your... my first thought. Uh, can you still give her the money anyway? No. <laughs> no, but you can. Give her the money, <laughs> Carlo. <laughs> All right. The day has not been a total loss for you, Jim, because you're, the result of your activities here has given you $1,050. And you're still a champ, so you'll have another go at it. We'll be back with her and the stars right after this. Now we want to find out which star had the one large wow. number that's up there. I hate to leave. Ready, I'll be right set, back. go. Pulez-vous. Lydia Cornell. Lydia Cornell had the big one. The 3 0 was there. Stars, we thank you. I know it's only Thursday, but uh, NBC has something special planned for this time slot tomorrow, so we won't be here, and neither will you. 
because it'll be lonely if you show up and nobody's here but you. <laughs> but we look forward to seeing you on another occasion. Thank you for being here. You were great. Right? And uh, we hope you have a good day tomorrow. And we'll, we'll be around here back again here on uh, Monday. Gene Rayburn inviting you to join us then. And John Bowman saying so long for the match game, Hollywood Squares Hour. And Gene Cusinati, how was that? A member of our studio audience will receive the AT&T Showcase Olympic Commemorative Telephone and Sculptures celebrating the 1984 Olympics. Sculptures for your phone like this Olympic runner furnished by AT&T Phone Centers. Speaking for the match game, Hollywood Squares Hour, a Mark Goodson television production.